Uh, have you called the order? Oh, okay, good. Uh, call to order. Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors, Monday, October 3rd, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. Stockbridge Campus or via the Google Meet. And uh, we'll call it to order at 6, 5, 5.32, let's say. Um, uh, any adjustments to the agenda? As far as you know, Jamie? We did add in the school about the driver's vouchers. That sounds just good, yeah. Um, and are you during your report? Can we talk? Yeah, and we got the full board report too. But okay, yeah, good. I'll, I'll hit a few items in the event. I probably got to be with Granville Hancock for about 25 minutes tonight. Okay, starting at 6 30. So I'll try to highlight a couple things in the event that the timing is looking like I may not be here when you hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. okay. Um, uh, approve the minutes of Monday, September 12th, 2022, regular meeting. What's your pleasure on those notes? And so move. Second. Any discussion? Sorry, anybody got an extra pen? Please, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Two in my pocket. I don't uh no discussion all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. thank you guys have it do we have any public comment do we have any public here let's see unknown i don't know who you are are you a member of our public <laughs> who is it's midge who's oh midge Mitch scanlon oh hi midge i couldn't recognize you with the light behind you you looked angelic with your halo of light um uh, do you have any comment uh, at this point in the meeting? Yes? No? No, no. no I don't. I I had to turn my mic on. No, I don't. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I don't see any phone numbers, so I think you're okay. Uh, board comment. Um, I just want to say it was a real education to go to the State Board of Ed hearing just to see the dynamics, to see what they're talking about, to see who they are, to actually see Mr. French. Um, and uh, it was also rather shocking, the result. Um, I was really, I actually woke up Saturday morning like, what? So um, I, I, can, I can tell you, I was not shocked. I expected that. But really, that we're yeah. still on that list. Because I, well, the, the report came back to us. And it said, well, we've let go a bunch of people. And I was like, oh, great, we're done. And then it was like us and Mount Abe and the Addison. Yeah, Central Vermont. Central Vermont. And so, uh, and, and basically the bottom line is that it, uh, it says that all three of those need to prepare to take, be ready to take Lincoln in as of July 1st, 2023, because <clears throat> they're going to make a decision. So. This is to say, I just say I've already started some of my process. I've talked to Tim Calabro that I think this is an interesting article. I've talked to the education reporter at Vermont Digger saying I think this is a very interesting education. I think there's a lot of shadows of Act 46. Um, I, uh, I, it is our hope to really get this word out. The next hearing will be in November, I think the 15th or something like that. I would really hope that we can load that auditorium with people. Because I, I, I feel personally, and you would have a much more accurate um, assessment of this, I feel that this would seriously imbalance our, our SU and really challenge the ability to keep good people, um, to keep our budgets straight, and to deal with really, if I may say so, uh, is not a cooperative board. Um, uh, the point I made when I spoke was that um, when Ripton came to us, they talked to Jamie, they met with the SU board. They, I think they even visited the schools, didn't they? Or they didn't no, maybe okay. visit schools, but okay. they definitely came to a couple of SU Yeah, board yeah. And, um, and just were so ready to work with us. And they also made a very clear stipulation that they didn't want to join any place where they were, somebody felt forced that they had to be. Lincoln is very different. They want a problem solved for them. They feel that somebody else should be doing it, basically, and um, and they're they haven't approached us at all. So I I, I, I really hit me hard, um, uh, and I, I think it's probably you'll calm me down as you always do, 
or the irrational approach, but I do really believe we need to get educate our public all across the SU. Uh, we need everybody needs to know about this issue. Um, it's not something that's just something that can be around the board chairs anymore, because um, I really do believe it has a chance to really disturb us. Um, and all the great work we have done and gotten to this point and finally gotten to a sort of calm place. Right. Look Good. forward to learning more about it then. You were, you were there, Bill. Yeah, I uh, concur totally. Um, I'm a little bit more not bullish, but feeling that the state board is fully capable um, and with the, the Secretary of Education to make the right decision. And the right decision Good. clearly isn't for the students the taxpayers um, to um, have Lincoln join us. Mm -hmm. uh, the distance between alone really removes most of the um, efficiencies that is dro dro drove Act 46. They want quality education, but they want efficiencies to lower the cost per student. Teacher well, how do you do that? How do you share with, with when you're 26 or you're an hour away and, um, and, and 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 the culture and community. How do you how do you link up? I mean, mm -hmm. one thing that's strong about us is that we, we see ourselves. We have two communities, but we're one educational community. It's pretty hard to link up with Lincoln, that's on the other side of 125 and up the oh, hill. So, uh, and I've driven that. Yeah, and tell us what you in think. the summertime, it's nice in a sports car. But I'll tell you, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I hate to say it. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that um, just to share is that uh, Sarah Root, who's uh, the vice chair of the SU board, suggested that we put together a letter writing campaign um, to the um, State Board of Education about this matter. And I think that's a great idea. And it, and it basically uh, follows your idea about um, letters to the editor. The letters that we can send to the State Board of Education are the same letter that we can send to Tim Mm -hmm. letters to the editor so we get two strikes on that one is to educate the educational community about what's at stake as well as educating um the state board and i think nobody is better equipped in doing that is the six of us mm -hmm. if we each could compose one letter mm -hmm. um that would help get there I, I and through you sir i really think that the state board would be listening very much to our principal about you know, how do you do that when you're on a mountain range away from I, um i was just going to say i think the next presentation a big map mm -hmm. i think we have a big map would be up. i think they've heard us oh okay you I, really do i do i think that they've heard well, our challenges still on because the they it wasn't their list they asked lincoln to give them their primary oh list. okay thank you it's a big distinguisher okay there. thank you and we are a supervisory union they don't like to disrupt unified districts to make them into and so essentially the, the two that are left on the list are the two closest supervisory okay units. but it wouldn't hurt to help our hand a little bit no absolutely yeah. but I, I i do want to say i i felt hurt by the state board. okay good um, i felt hurt when i spoke i know um and i think that they share many of the same concerns i think what they're doing is 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 doing due diligence to make mm -hmm. this important decision I think it's also important to remember Ripton was in the same situation and the state board appointed them their own supervisory district. Mm. That was the recommendation by Secretary French and that's what they did. So there is that option as well. So there's okay. four options. There's having that actually shouldn't talk to you on Friday. They rejoin back <laughs> into Mount Abraham Unified School District. They could appoint to one of the two closest SUs they could deconstruct Mount Abraham Unified School District into a supervisory union, mm -hmm. or they could appoint Lincoln to be their own operating supervisory district, which is what they did with Ripton. That, so if we look at historical decisions they okay. made in the last eight months, they went with the, you made this decision, you left a unified district. There's not anyone saying that this works for them, so you're gonna be your own supervisory district. I, do you want to come in, our, our chair? Ethan, you're right. This is important. Mm -hmm. We can't, this is not something to say it's going to be okay. We've got to make sure it's okay. And the other thing is the board's role. We don't run the schools. Yeah. We don't go in the classrooms. And by the way, 
to walk around the classrooms. It's oh, just my, I just beam from <laughs> ear to ear. I, I just feel like a kid again. Uh -huh. And I want to talk to you more seriously about your spelling program that Jane Feinberg's doing because I need some help. <laughs> um, but one of our roles as a board is to lead the political process, educate the political process, advocate. And this is one way we can do it. Yep. And we're not only talking to the state, we're talking to our people that live in our communities that might not be aware of what special things are going on here. I don't think anybody's aware of what this is. I'm not even clear of it either. Yeah. I do but, want to point out we are in board comment, though. Yeah, so, and yeah. I'm hoping we have more discussion about <laughs> this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good point. Good point. Um, yeah. And I also, um, as you know, those of you who have been with me throughout, I tend to, you know, go along everything's fine and then i when i see a problem i jump on it you know like the high school building like some of the other things we faced like the unmerger um so i'm really glad to hear how you feel and how you take and no, i think we and have to absolutely still do our work due diligence like but, we have but, been. but that's great because I, I do up. want to make certain it, it's noted i do think the state were heard like okay, i do good. think because that's just, what i that's what it felt like when i saw it and i just yeah okay good thank you very much Amy, for making <laughs> thank it. you um, um it just yeah Good. I uh, just my board yeah. comment was I'm wondering if when we get sent out the email that has all of um, the reports, if we can also include the minutes from last that meeting. Would be great. I know they get sent out separately. That's wonderful. That was like almost a month ago. So it would be really nice to be able to have them again read at your fingertips. Thank you so there. much. You know, just, I, I've heard that feedback. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Then let's move on. Oh, wonderful. Faye, great to see you. Enlighten us. You're you're muted now. I think. There you I go. Know, yes, I just unmuted. So I'm here to discuss a little bit about what's happening in the third grade math room, math classroom, and we start our day just getting kids to be thinking mathematically, and often kids are so concerned with. Oh no! Please don't show that right now. Please don't show that. Take that down. Whatever you're. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's <laughs> In a moment, you can share that. Um, so we're always trying to get kids to be thinking mathematically and thinking deeply about numbers and number relationships, et cetera. So we start our day with a number of the day. Okay, here's the answer. I already gave you the answer. The answer is 24. So then the kids have to come up with some kind of equation, some math problem, a word problem, something that the answer is 24. And so that's how we start our day. They come in, they get their books out, and they just go to work and they can write on the, I have places on the wall with graph paper. I have places on the wall that are plain, or they can write on a little sheet of paper and post it on the wall. And so I'm just going to ask all of you to do that right now. If you have a scrap piece of paper, the answer is 24. Create a problem. I was just doing some of this with Wilder the other night, so it was really fun. I love the idea of the answer first. Right, because some kids are real answer grabbers, and they think that's what math is. They just have to find the answer. So if you give them the answer to begin with, then they can then start thinking. How many do you want? Okay, so someone share. Go ahead and share. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Ethan. 48 divided by 2 is 24. <laughs> Wonderful. Guess 12 times 2 is 24. All right, Midge. Oh, well, you're muted. I just muted. bought two dozen eggs. How many do I have? One. Oh, <laughs> yes. you're a kind of thinker. Good for you. I have, how many years will it take to get to 24 months? <laughs> oh, but then the answer is true. Excellent. Right? That's two. Yeah. Oh, that's two. So I reversed it. <laughs> <laughs> two years represents how many months. There you go. There you go. There you, go. you have to think like Jeopardy, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to tell you that in third grade, it's a big year where they are, are really moving from just thinking additively. Like they're very, very used to adding and subtracting, adding and subtracting from second grade. And in third grade, our program starts right out in our number corner where they are actually having to start multiplying right away and seeing from day to day to day, there's something going on multiplicatively. And then in the 
next month, October, and I'm, I've got to tell you, I don't know everything about this whole year program. You could ask me anything about fourth and fifth grade, sixth grade math, but third grade's new to me. So I'm just, I'm catching on, but I love seeing where I'll be taking the kids for fourth grade. So I already know that program, which is helpful. In the October calendar collector piece, they're going to start thinking fractionally as well because they're going to be starting to measure what fraction of a liter they fill with water each day. And so there's so much, it's so rich, this program. So I have kiddos that are, you know, from the spectrum still very much in additive reasoning and they they create these equations with that they think the longer the better and they could have like six, <laughs> seven, eight, nine numbers going on in there, but it's all adding and subtracting, adding and subtracting. So now if you would like to put up that um, share of the number of the day, grade three. And I have two examples here. One is of 424 and one is for 145. So I'll focus on the 24. And if you can notice, one kiddo right at the top is already thinking multiplicatively. Six times four is 24. Another child um, wrote 30 take away six is 24, but the three is backwards. So, you know, you get the gamut of, the, and that will shift up, that will be changed, but I thought, I just wanted you to see kind of the gamut. Here's one, 20 plus one plus one plus one plus one equals 24. <laughs> then we have a child, 1.5 times 16 equals 24. And uh, the, uh, then this I said, wait, 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 you have a better one, I have a better one. And I said, don't erase it, don't erase it, get another piece of paper. So then he wrote, 0. 0.75 times 32 equals 24. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness, I've got some work to do to keep this child challenged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm working on it and I'm keeping there. But, you know, I gave him a problem today that was like, whoo, he said, this is the easiest problem you've given me so far, which oh. I thought, okay, and, um, and it's algebra. So um, then you see another one, 25 take away one equals 24. So we just talk each day about their equations. And I don't go into depth on the child who is super challenged, but I said, how did you know that 1.5 times 16, and then what did you do to these two numbers? They changed a lot to 0.75 times 32. He said, I cut one in half and doubled the other one. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be talking about that about and with easier numbers, of course, for the other kids as they get into multiplicative thinking. So that's just a little snippet of what's going on in third grade math in Rochester. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's really fun. Yeah, yeah. It, it is fun because it, it really gets a lot of discussion going and the kids talk with one another and they want to know. <laughs> how Do they see, like, did the other kids see the 1.5 times 16 oh. equals 24? Yeah, it's all. That would be really. And then did they sort of go, huh? And then they um, figured it out, or? I have one other student who is thinking in these same kinds of terms as this student, and so it's raising that child up to be challenged, and they're kind of going at it with each other and having discussion, and uh, talking about decimals, and they're trying to relate that to fractions now. So, and they're, they're like pushing each other. And in other problems that have come up, they're starting to add fractions and multiplying fractions in their equations. Great. Wow. Yeah, I, it kind of wows me too when I see third graders doing this. It's like, whoo, there's some good number sense going on right there. Or what? Tape measure. Oh, I was just, I was going to say that. Tape measure. I, I wish, I you know, tape measure. Tape measure yeah, I, I did. We had an incredible shop program <clears throat> in uh, my elementary school and uh, measuring mm -hmm. was a huge yeah. part of it. Yeah. And measuring is a big part of this program too. It, it happens uh, both in the main program and it happens in what we call number corner. So we have almost two hours of math every day for third grade. Nice. That's great. Wow, thank you very much. That's thank really you so wonderful. much, Faye. You're welcome. It's very fun stuff. That's great.
hope to come have you back like you know maybe mid mid spring or something and see where you went oh. see how this well, I'll tell you, I spend a lot of time looking for challenging um, problems because as this child starts to get the least bit bored, I just pull one right off. I, oh, they're, they're tagged up right here behind me. <laughs> and I just pull one off and we tape it into his journal and he goes about solving it. And wow. it's, it's really fascinating to watch these great minds really growing. So, all right, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Uh, celebration of learning. Thank you so much for those. It's so good to have them back. Superintendent report. So you have my report in hand, uh, a, a few highlights, um, and then there's a bunch of things that will be on the agenda. But one highlight is just a reminder that the full board retreat is on October 20th at 530 as well. Uh, in South Royalton, that was discussed at the last school board meeting, mm -hmm. just to get that on your calendar. So that would be retreats in back-to-back -back weeks, because um, we're scheduled for the what time so. again? Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty for the twentieth. Yep. 20th. And we're up on the thirteenth. Thirteenth. Yeah, and that's on your agenda. As if. And I forget, are these both? They're both in person only. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the whole point. Yep. Yeah. Um. So there's that a reminder to take a look at the draft strategic plan and provide feedback on the feedback form. I'm going to have a letter in the Herald um, next week too, reminding the community uh, where they can find the draft strategic plan and where they can provide feedback. Email. I had trouble. What's that? I'm sorry. We, just, we were talking. Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. We had so, find you. and I'll push that all out again. Yeah, well, I, I must say I, I missed it first time, the second time, the third time, and then I found it because you kept saying it's there. So yeah. you were absolutely correct, sir, and I just was fumbling. A question on the our feedback on the strategic plan, what do you suggest be our – how we do – what's the process for our feedback? Do we go through our chair? There's a Google the chair form through? that was shared with you too, so I'll have Ray push that out. Okay. We created a form that allows you to give feedback on several different components of it. Okay, and so that and will go directly to, back to it will go back to me. And it designates if you're a board member, community member, staff member, or parent. And I, I would think that our thoughts need to be shared to our fellow board members. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to do that, or we just CC? CC. Yeah. Okay. And when do you need to have that to fit your your time? Uh, uh, scheduled to come up with a second draft my goal would be to try to take the feedback at least that i have thus far and have it in a second draft to share at the retreat on the 20th that's what kathy was looking for so we need to get get going uh, maybe a, a week from today it'd be nice to have it from well yeah ideally by the 13th that gives me a week turnaround so gives you a little more of a week. if he could do that again that would be great <clears throat> i don't think i'm no, I did I you same thing. No, no, I'll push it see. back out. And you did see it. See what this just strategic plan and the Google reply. No. Okay, so I'll push it back. Somehow out. we missed it. And that's we will Well, I might have seen it, but I didn't click into it. Well, no, that's that. that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent it as a PDF, and then it's also embedded the the. Forms are all embedded in the letter I sent to the community oh, too. Oh, okay. That, see, I oh, thought that's where I'd seen the links okay. to it. Okay. I apologize for that. I'm not sure I saw that. Anyway, um, yeah, that's important. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the community has it, and we're getting feedback already from oh, the good. community. So, Great. Um, but we'll, that's we'll mention it in the, uh, we'll in the um, Herald too, just because I, I want to get as much stakeholder feedback as we can, as we as we keep working on drafting. Right. I mean, I'm expecting three or four drafts. Plans. Is sort of what. I'm Deal. Is so, this like a policy? Is yeah. this treated like a policy? It's different. No, it's different. The okay. Feedback form. Oh yeah, I'm not seeing that either. It's in the letter. There's a link. Yeah, I have this. This. Oh, there's a That's link from in it. Yeah. There's go a to the whole, community letter. The whole community. Okay, letter. community okay letter. go to the community right. letter that right. We sent always out copy one letter yes. before it goes you out. It just sent it out like yes. Last week, five, five days ago. Yeah. 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 It's too bad the board oh, retreat yeah, got canceled because of ESBA okay. regional meeting was that same night. 
and I was going to go, and then I realized, oh, we had the retreat, and then the retreat was canceled, but I couldn't register at that point. Anyway, just that would have been yeah. useful. I registered for the, the um, annual meeting, but at night, it's it's basically, as far as I can tell, socialization and, and oh. entertainment. They have a, a series of workshops. Some, too bad, because they're all at one at the same time, so you can't have more than one, but they're in the afternoon of the 20th, I think at 1 o'clock, so That's if you want to drive up there... And I also think that they're all going to be on a web, you know, and available uh, later on if we want to go in our, in our through a Zoom link and just go up there on our on our uh, laptops and do it. But yeah, it looks um, the meat of the program on Thursday appears to be in the afternoon. Okay, at one o'clock. Interesting thing on Friday on a, a, a student forum that they brought together and they created a. Um, kind of a, a, a program, and then they're going to break us out into groups. And I must say, I'm, I haven't been around older kids, um, high school kids, middle school kids. So I'll be fascinated what they're thinking about, what they're concerned about, what turns them on and off. And um, so that's that's on a Friday morning on the 21st, I think at 9 to noon, maybe. Um, so that's another thing you might want to look at. And we all should have gotten a, a, um, a mailer from the Vermont School Board Association that gives uh, the annual meeting uh, agenda, mm -hmm. so to speak. Anything more, Jamie? Um, just that we're we're starting a budget season. Reminder, you're going to get your first draft. Mm -hmm. If I'm not hearing when you start to go through that, that is focus on salary and benefits. Mm -hmm. And it's that budget, that budget, those budget expenses are based on what we have for a um, ratified contract. So those are real dollar figures based on the staff we have. Lindy will talk to you about what some of those proposed changes are. And this, this is like draft one of student support based on the feedback that we get. Remember next month you get draft two of student support and the draft of the rest of your faculty and staffing for all the rest of the programming mm -hmm. in November. Then you get the whole budget in December and then you get a second draft of the whole budget come January. So I just wanted to review that timeline and how we do it. Um, and so this is just one piece, but there are some changes when he's proposing and should be able to speak to the board as to the why around that. And um, the the other thing is um, EEI is not joining us tonight, but I have updates on the work that's going on by EEI okay. um, that we, I can hit too. So if I'm not here, like can I we, said, I'm only going to be gone 25 minutes. I don't have solid numbers yet because we're finalizing up the last revenue grants okay. that we've been told we're going to get, but I want to make certain we secure those. So you'll have all real numbers in November, okay. and Eric will be here in person again yeah. in okay. November. Good. Um, um, the, the other thing I'll mention is that the the as far as your building and facilities, the fire alarm system, we're still on a part on back order. Mm -hmm still in the pipeline we're still good the fire system's um functioning just not functioning at the level we want it to in regards to it it call so it works if there was a fire it it trouble like it it sounds that's not the problem the problem is that our provider that oversees our security systems the alarm system tells it that it's in trouble all the time and it's not in trouble so it's really a nuisance on that other backside too um, and so it's time to repair it and, and redo it. And so I just want you to know we're continuing to move forward with that. The other thing is, is that the repair to the boiler, a big chunk of that was done at Rochester last week. They need to come back on Wednesday to finalize it. Mm -hmm. um, so those are a couple of things that I wanted to make certain that I got out there to the board. Question I had for you that I forgot to ask at the SU meeting. Um, how is the new schedule working for you? Are you getting home more? Oh, it's great. Good. Good. Yes. Good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. No, I yeah, no, no, no. It, it, the, my evening balance of being actually to go to a, you know, one of the kids sporting events, uh -huh. like I didn't get to, to anything the yeah. last two years, uh -huh. not uh -huh. like maybe one or two. Things. This is the whole point. I can now go to a sporting event, Yay. which is pretty special. I'm yeah. very yeah. happy. It's, it's been, it's been actually really great. Cause that's one of the things, how everybody working together, 
Very good. Thank you. I'm glad that. And not just for me. I, I think Tara would speak to. Oh us. yeah. No. I mean, I I would ask this. I'm I'm so happy for all of you that this is working. Crazy. Yeah. We're we're actually happy with 5:30. I think a lot of us getting home. Okay. Yes. Good. Any questions yeah. for the superintendent on his report? I want to advise you once a month. I'm going to ask a question having to do with a term or um, a phrase that I don't understand. So the, my question to this is on the second page, uh, based on a, a community school grant, Act 67, we're partner with the Big Picture Learning, and I don't have a clue of what. Yeah. It, and the Thanks, goal guys. of that is to increase in our students' opportunities for mentoring and authentic learning, which are just core principles. So can you just briefly tell us what's big picture learning? Yeah, thanks. So big picture learning is out of the big picture schools that actually came from this essentially magnet process in Rhode Island around oh. taking this concept that students would essentially create personalized learning plans that would embed proficiencies, core content areas at the high school level through action projects. Um, and so what we're, there is a big picture, actually Rochester had, we had a big picture while, yeah. school we tried at the high school uh, that Andy West was, was running. And so there has been a really successful big picture school in South Burlington for a number of years. And so big picture is now across the country doing consulting oh, really? work is on it, this concept. Is, is, is it consultants or is it a program? It's, it both? it's actually a school system. They create these these magnet schools, but what they're doing for us yeah. is consulting with us in regards to they have created some really great digital tools that house anyone who has mentored or supported like work-based learning, community-based learning across the country. And so what we're going to have is access to these folks that are volunteers that have supported kids in different projects where it's aeronautics, you name it, and then it allows us then our pathways coordinators to connect a student with that person. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a big part of what we're working with them on right now is to get to be part of that database, um, right. to have access to those resources for our kids. Cool. As we try to build more capstone projects and things of that nature, mm -hmm. you know, one of the big hurdles I think we find is not having the mentors, right? Mm -hmm. And so to have this idea of us sharing across the whole SU, this mentor base, mm -hmm. but also larger at state. And then with virtual now, we've gotten a lot better that we could leverage someone in a whole other state mm -hmm. to be able to meet with students to work on a project. Cool. Thank you. Further questions for our superintendent? Oh, I realize, seeing Robert. Yeah, he is in California, oh, yeah. so. That's right, that's right. I remember hearing that. Very good. Um, is he surfing down in San Diego down in the Yeah, no, not quite. No, he's not quite. still dealing with his brother's estate who passed away in June. So uh, is that what comes next? Yes, principles report. Thank you. Um, so you have uh, my report in front of you. It's um, odd to think, even though we're in October, that kids have really only been in school for 22 days. Yeah. <laughs> like that's really, we were looking at some data today in an after school meeting, we were looking at some attendance data and it was like, wait a second, this out of only 20 days was when the data was pulled. So um, kind of a good reminder, even though as we head into the sixth week of school, which um, a lot of our teachers took responsive classroom this summer, which is a program focusing on building routines and expectations and um, as we hit week six, it's not really six full, you know, six full weeks of school, but the kids are doing great and the teachers are with really building routines and expectations. And now we're switching to building academic stamina. So really starting to dig into, um, you know, a literacy block's 90 minutes and a math block is 75 to 90 minutes, depending on the age of the student and really being able to productively work for a majority of that time and what that looks like and how to work independently and also with the teacher. So um, those are kind of some focal points that we're working on right now. Um, I can't think of anything a lot going on in the report, but we've jumped into um, the assessment window and that will start. Um, 
we are going to be using track my progress which is different than star 360 so a different universal screener and that'll um what's instead of instead of yep and that'll start next week where's the um, shoot where's the test on? uh bottom bottom of number three mm -hmm. Yeah, the dibbles. Right. We heard at the SU that mm -hmm. there were some technical glitches, but that people were working around it yep. pretty well. Um, Is that going? So both Linda and Donna have been working with SU interventionists, literacy interventionists, as well as Onda. And they've come up with a spreadsheet, and they've been using um, uh, hard copies, which I think they like a little bit better, knowing that it moves the way it's intended to move through the screening process. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't. I think tomorrow they're supposed to be able to try again to see if the technology piece is working. But it's supposedly a national problem, they said, with the, this Dibbles background. It's the business that runs it. Right. But the, the, the testing is going well. Right. And the and the local and the local level, we're doing fine with it. Yeah. But it's just that we don't have the support right. of the platform to put it all on. Right. So the data analysis part isn't quite present yet, but Onda has come up with this great spreadsheet where they can enter their results and it helps us flag sure. students um, right. who may need additional support. So. Good. Further questions for our principal? Justine, you good? Okay. Let's move on to our business manager. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Tara. Hello. So you have my report, which outlines what's going on in the business office for the month of October. And then I also provided the FY22 year-end projections prior to our fiscal year audit. So Parker, if you want to put those up on the screen. Thank you. So I set this up similar to what you see in your audit, um, rolled up by category or object code. So you'll see the items where we are projected to overspend was on salary, communications, energy, and operations contracted services. And then our areas of savings was health insurance, contracted services, and tuition. So between what we have projected to overspend and what we're saving, we have projected a $66,823 surplus on the expenditure side of the budget. And then on the revenue side, wrapped up what we received throughout the year, you can see we got uh, not as much as we projected for elementary tuition. We received more in preschool tuition, more in interest income. We didn't get as much in miscellaneous income. And then um, rentals, we were shy on the rental side, but clearly, you know, we didn't have our buildings open as we normally did. We got more in our forestry grant than projected, and we received about $1,400 in donations. So overall, we were $918 to the good in our revenue budget. So right now, your overall projected surplus in the general fund for 22 is $67,740. So I'll answer any questions there, if there are any, if I can. Amy, go ahead. Can you speak to the uh, potential savings from the tuition? Yeah. The hundred, yes, the hundred and thirty-seven seven hundred three. Yep. Open that up. Yep. I say fuel bill. Excellent. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> did you anybody notice the irony? Yeah. It's exactly what the budget is for the fuel bill for the high school. <laughs> So as Tara's looking, I mean, I look at that and say it's about seven and a half students. Yep, that's what I was just counting, Jamie, and to say which if it was secondary um, public and secondary private. 
we had some students who moved around in there and then it looks like we have um, several students who actually enrolled into homeschool still the secondary level. Okay. okay so uh, that is you know that is quite a big number and I uh, know that we got hit at one point with a school um, kind of billing us after uh, the end of a fiscal year um, and I just want to uh, hear that you are confident that all all the kids that we believe um, you know that we're responsible for paying tuition for those bills have come in and are accounted for yes there still is the announced versus allowable tuition which is the bill backs that happen so that's still a potential but as far as who was accounted for the school that we had the issue with a couple of years ago they did in fact bill us on time this year Okay. <laughs> and we've have we done the confirmation with all these students? All are, have all our tuition students been confirmed? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Ethan. We don't pay res. We don't pay tuition without confirmation of residency. That's right. That's the middle. Thank you. So the sixty-seven thousand seven forty rolls into our our. Um, budget or what do you want to call it our, our cash position for fiscal year 23 is that correct we have to decide what we want to do with that right okay and well, the other thing is right. that we had earlier estimates were a little bit larger than this so did we make some decisions based on the larger amount that we're going to need to crawl back or is this basically free money in this, that we can dedicate to important uh purposes so this is money actually for 24. You're in 22, 23 right now. Yeah. So you this once the audit is finalized, yeah. you have two options as a board. You can use it as offsetting revenue in 23, 24, or you can ask the voters to put in a special yeah. reserve. But it actually goes in, I was wrong by a year. So it flips over to the next year, which we're starting to budget for. Correct. Thank Correct. you. And so one of the things I think that that hit us in regards to those prior projections is substitutes ended up being significantly higher than we had estimated in the spring. We had a few staff out who we'll actually see your student support budget. Lindy's recommending we boost the subline out because we've been just finding that absenteeism or long-term absenteeism has hit us a little bit. So you'll see that there's an adjustment. Um, so there's a piece there. Oh, well, we're getting more hurt. conscious about not spreading a cold that we might have to, you know, and maybe. Right, and, right. and we can talk about it when we get into student yeah. um, services budget, but it's definitely an area where it's already today there are three people out, yeah. you know, and it just is where we are, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you saw uh, Spalding High School closed today because they didn't have staffing in Barry wow. and U32 where, where our children go. They had a early release day because they couldn't staff the afternoon. Wow. wow. Yeah. Because of sickness? Nope. Yep. The staffing. Yep. Or staffing. Staffing levels due to sickness. Oh. Yeah. Not in our SU, but in both Terry a lot of people are and in Berlin Wave. Uh, sorry. And but I think that order. people are probably just more conscious about the fact that there is a respiratory thing mm -hmm. going around right now and mm -hmm. and are rather than coming to work with a little bit of sickness, yeah. not coming. Yeah. But that that's that's really tough mm -hmm. well i just want to make sure i understand it seems like a function of two things one is that we're pretty much 100 percent staffed where it sounds like barry isn't so then when you have extraordinary or right. uh, yes exactly. in large number of people that are sick because that compounds the two things together we still might have the second which is sickness mm -hmm. but as far as our staffing level it sounds like back up really 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 strong mm -hmm. and that's a compliment to the whole team and the policies and support and budgets everything else that people want to be here it seems to me well and, and part of our strategy which has served us well through covid was to do a better job of guaranteeing sub work so mm -hmm. saying to people like you can come be a substitute at wrvsu we're going to keep you busy five days a week mm -hmm. and typically we need them four out of five sometimes they may be helping with duties that has cost a little more, but it's given us a better bench in regards to predictability of how the school runs. Absolutely. It also, we have some, we have a handful of people who we know we have, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have subs that, that 
we're trying to see, are you willing to come in? We have this group of subs wow. that, that report to us every day. That has helped yeah. um, build the bench, but it, it, it has cost some more to do that. Mm -hmm. We're gonna hear about that. Good. Anything further on the business manager's report? And let us move on to WRVSU full board updates. Um, you've heard a lot about the Lincoln um, uh, conundrum, I'll say. Uh, the other thing that there's, um, I think was new was the flag policy. And that's in here. Too. That's yeah, nice. that's in here. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to talk about that. Um, well, I, um, I at some point I would like a, a full update and understanding of this Lincoln Lincoln thing and what their options are, and what their structure is, because it's different from ours. And so with what what's happening with them i just would like a, a good understanding and i don't know if this is the space yeah i know i mean i can give you i think a three minute okay. pretty good synopsis yeah okay. so lincoln's a k-6 school that was a long-standing district that was part of a merged unified high school now abraham unified high school so that means that they all of their students go to mount abraham high school yes. and it is a, what is it called the unified school district where yes. we're a unified Supervisory, supervisory union. union. So it's a different We're a supervisory structure. union. Totally different structure. Totally different it, structure. It would be like all of us having the SU board that govern all of our schools. Okay. One board. All of our students going to, let's say, Bethel and then South Royal. Yes. Mm -hmm. that okay. Would be, yep. okay. So that's that is their model. They've had a middle a unified middle high school for a long time and independent elementary boards. Okay. During Act 46, they became a pre-K-12 operating district with one board. Got it. And so the there was a there's a merger study committee with next door at Addison Northwest, which is Virgins, which is a unified district. Okay. So if you think about the map, you got Lincoln, you got Bristol, and then over here you got Virgins, and they they Virgins that that unified district has like five small towns that feed into their middle and high school. Okay. Um, they have had a study committee about merging those two unified districts into one. State board will call it a super merger. Okay. It? It's it's two unified districts coming together as one pre K twelve district. And they would all go to one pre K. They could choose which high school. I don't. Yeah. There's, okay. Okay. There's a couple of choices on right now. The what is important to note about that that impacts us. Lincoln was worried their school could get closed based on those uh, articles of agreement. Right. So they decoupled back in the spring. They went to the state board and. There's actually, if you were to look at the legislation that was drawn up over the decoupling of mergers, it's much different than what we went through with Rochester Stockbridge. There's now a study committee that has to be formed. Study committee has to make a recommendation to the state board. Remember the select board ran the decoupling before? Mm -hmm. Now the petition actually comes to your school district board if there was a decoupling. So that whole there's a whole new law that has gone around decoupling. Part of that law gave Lincoln an opportunity to onboard back to Mount Abraham Unified Union School District and hold a vote, like Ripton did last week, by the way. Ripton is now back with Addison Central. Good, good. Same so, as before. Good, yes. Right. Okay. Lincoln took this off the table in May that they would have this opportunity to hold a vote. That is one of the things that the state board clearly articulated last week that they were frustrated by. Because there's not a tool now for them to just hold a vote and join back into Mount Abraham Unified District. They took that off the table. Yeah, they actually would have to have a merger study committee to have that happen. And all the towns would have to vote again. Uh, okay. So that, that is, it was their quick way back and that's been removed. Have been, mm -hmm. They been burned removed. their bridge. Yeah. Okay. And so where we're at is, is that they are a K pre-K-12 district. They operate elementary mm -hmm. and they have, they designated late in, uh, the first time I heard that they had designated us as their priority is in a letter to the state board, which I received five days before this meeting. I knew that we were one of the SUs being under consideration. I didn't know that we they that they had identified us as their preference until Chair Olson, the state board chair, sent me a letter that they had sent to them. We weren't copied on it. <laughs> the throughout the discussions and hearings. 
it became clear that out of the supervisory unions in the state, which there's many, it's much fewer. It used to be probably predominantly before Act 46 supervisory unions, okay. not supervisory districts. Now it's actually the other way. It's primarily supervisory districts, which means one board, a district board that oversees multiple schools. Multiple school buildings that all filter into one. And so they, their, their preference is to join an SU. The state board's preference, if you look in legislation, is supervisory district boards. Mm -hmm. That is their preferred governance model, okay. meaning this one board that governs multiple schools. One way. Okay. And so where that's what there the state is would like to see yes what, that's what act 46 was about mm -hmm. and so there where there is the a i would say where there's this tension point is is that the state board is in a difficult position of saying they have said i mean it's in statute that that, that the prime the, that they they prefer a supervisory district and so to have lincoln join mount abraham unified school district as a supervisory union would mean they're deconstructing their preferred governance model. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Mm -hmm. Even though Lincoln's been working with them for decades. The other issue they have is that there's nobody geographically in a good location to actually provide resources efficiently mm -hmm. and meet like school quality standards like special education is a real concern for me in regards to us providing those related services, I'd have to contract with another district. Mm -hmm. This is part of right. what our Get argument has been from our side. Yeah. Right. So it has been left with the state board, and we are not the closest SU, by the way. Central Vermont Supervisory Union is geographically the closest. There are also two districts versus our having six districts. Mm -hmm. um, they're also still in the conversation. So there is the state board is looking for a recommendation from secretary french in november and then the state board will take action they've asked us to budget at the su level uh the contingency budget in the event that lincoln was to join us which we've run numbers it's about four hundred and fifty thousand. we're going to fine tune those numbers tara is actually meeting with the mount abraham unified that, school district is that four hundred fifty thousand? Between what they would bring in and what we would have to spend, no. or that's how much that's how much additional the SU budget would go up. And so we haven't figured out yet what they would bring in. No, we have. Oh, we have. Yeah, and those those numbers we have shared with the state board. Wow. Yeah, your assessment would go up. Yeah, they it don't bring in enough yeah. with their to average daily it. membership to cover that amount. How many kids are in their school? Thirty. They're between no two seventy six. Buildings. Oh, it is. They're yeah. in between the two building yeah. sizes. Oh. That's a different number. Right? So mm -hmm. the um, Ripton is much smaller. Yeah. Lincoln's bigger than okay. Ripton. So we're running those numbers. We're going to fine tune them by checking with the Mount Abraham Unified School District business manager. Tara has set up a meeting already uh, with CVSU and Mount Abe to make certain that we have the, the right numbers. Mm -hmm. My sense is that 450 figure could possibly even go up. I told the state board I thought that was a conservative figure. And so where we're left is, is I do believe the state board is going to take seriously the secretary's recommendation. Um, and, you know, Dan has been a superintendent. He understands our challenges. I mean, he has followed us. He knows where we're coming from. I knew about him. our school. I met with him when um, we were, the discussion around Lipton happened. And, you know, I do think that they took his recommendation seriously last time. It did result in his recommendation was that Ripton become a supervisory district or on board back. And that's what the state board did. So I don't know where we'll come out on this, but that's that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. Is that Lincoln has been appointed its own district and by statute, you have to have a supervisory unit overseeing the school district. Mm -hmm. Could you provide us with talking points or that's Which already ha that's happening even okay. and Sarah's going to say that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah okay. Cuz I'm um, just cuz some of what I've been saying is most of it's actually been general and accurate but uh I think just your specificity and knowledge of this. I mean I also don't think we need to go into the intricacies of the difference between districts and supervisory mm -hmm. unions and all that with our public. We just need to get the point across that this is not it's going to raise it's going to raise our rates and it's not going to give good education. So well, it's going to stretch our already 
lean yeah. central office yeah. it, right well, like we have to provide them transportation right mm -hmm. so i mean our, our bus systems over here yeah so it means either we would bid on them and if we couldn't find someone that would bid on them that means then we're spending time trying to contract bus services with another neighbor in district mm -hmm. Okay, so it ain't over yeah. yet. Thank you. Okay. Good. Further questions? I think that's the rest of the board updates. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> 85 WRBSU policy proposed flag. And policy. Patrick, you've been there, so I feel good about the yeah. coming back. It's been at the policy meeting. Okay. Take it away, Patrick. Discussion at the SU level. About <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. So we <clears throat> we decided to move forward with it. And <clears throat> has anybody read it? I did. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm not sure what you want to hear from me, other than what what, what do you remember the reasons for it? I believe there's a story behind it. There was a school that had got this asked asked to put up a flag. Isn't that the reason for it, and that they? Yeah, so have I haven't been policy? I haven't been around the discussion since the beginning of it, so oh, I'm not 100 okay. percent sure. What That's the, what I understand. Well, basically, the, what this is saying is that the flagpoles mm -hmm. is a form of, of government speech, and and it's giving everybody a chance. To, you know, so essentially, um, you have everybody. You have to go to to your school board, and the school board has, except for the. National flag and the Vermont state flag, which I was saying, I'd love to fly the national state flag. If we could fly one, because it's, it's in one and not the other. What's that? It's flown here, but not in Rochester. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to flag. change it. Yeah, get the state flag up. Oh, it's Rochester. Not. It's not in Rochester. Um, even a but the idea is that's that's the given, and then then the board would have the right to approve, and it would have to go along with educational purpose. It would have to not be controversial. There's a part of it, right, where no student would feel offended by it, I believe is part of that. Um, the I'm trying to remember, Megan, it's going to come back to you because one of the SU board members um, had an alternative, which was much simpler. Um, yeah. And I can't, do you remember that Yeah, discussion? she said um, in so many words, uh, why not? First of all, she wasn't contesting the fact that the flagpoles on school property is a governance um, ownership, right. the governance no. rule, and everything else. But she thought, when you get down to the bottom of it, isn't it simpler, more straightforward to basically have the flagpole um, um, wave the our country's flag and the state flag, and That's it. Um, and it. Because I was looking at this and looking at this, and this is quite complicated. You need to have a faculty support, the student support. They write a report. They come to this, the principal. They come to the the, the board. Mm -hmm. uh, we can support the students, or we can say no, and all that sort of stuff. And I'm saying, aren't there other opportunities for uh, students? And again, this is students. This isn't like this isn't a public flagpole. This mm -hmm. is. Uh, I want to put my whatever it is up here, but aren't there other avenues, valid avenues for our students to express themselves with posters or having a program at the auditorium or having uh, movies or clubs or uh, fundraisers that um, uh, forward their uh, their goals and the things they believe in as long as uh, the support of the school that is consistent with our curriculum and everything else. What I see this as happening is very possibly dividing our community and bogging, bogging down. One of the things nice about this year, and I don't have some of the scars you have on all the angst about going on, but we've been able to focus on the important stuff, mm -hmm. which is the kids, the kids, and how do we further their educational and well being. And so, I see this as a potential thing that could bog us down and bog the administration down. And it's almost like it's not a win-win. 
if you've got a controversy, one side wins mm -hmm. and the other side loses. And it could be students lose and the community, whatever they're opposing the students. We don't want to be in a situation where we're dividing. And I just see somehow the symbolism could be as a divisive tool. So I'm coming around to the point that, and this is what Megan requested in uh, the SU board mm -hmm. asked the policy committee to go back and kind of consider the alternative of basically having our country's flag and state That's flag. It. And it's, it's interesting um, that you say that because I haven't even really considered that. No, <laughs> and, 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 I agree. And, and, I, I, and I don't disagree. I mean, I think that even still with this all laid out, there's still so much room for issues to arise, like you're saying, conflict and well, and di dividing and. But just because something's controversial doesn't mean we should avoid it. No, no. What we did with the anti. But then also, you just raised the point that we only have one flagpole in Rochester. Where's that leave a chance for anybody to fly another flag? Well, you you know, underneath it, that that is that idea. okay? Well, it it it's been something that it's been um, obviously. Black Lives Matters and the Gay Pride are the two big ones that have been many schools, not many, I don't know many schools, but I've certainly seen them on school flagpoles, mm -hmm. and they've gone through a process. So in other words, kids know about this as an avenue to express their beliefs, their support. Um, so in other words, it, that's why flags, that's why flags are coming up. It's because they know about it, it's something that's out there, and they might want to do it. No, mm -hmm. I, I, I understand this point, but that said, but then yeah. again, you know, we took on an anti-racism policy and I was on the policy committee when we were getting some very strong pushback on that, that we were creating an issue that didn't actually exist. Um, and and I, I just said, well, I disagree with it. I've talked to people, in, you know, I've actually talked to actual people who, of color, who have been in this Vermont school system and, um, and it does exist. So I, I don't know. I, we are our, our input is certainly valid and i think we can even um even to the sense of a straw poll of how we feel this and if we make recommendations um that's what we can do tonight is to you know that's what they're that's why this is here this is why we read it three times is that we we present it we talk about it justine do you have a two cents on this um i i don't think so i, I i'm not quite sure I'm not, I don't have a, yeah, I, not, not yet. <laughs> the question on the second page, it says that only the main flagpole at the White River SU building will be utilized for the purpose of this policy. So we've just talked, the front of it talks about, you know, the, what can, the, about flying and, and well, approval, a mistake. but now is huh. it? Yeah. That's a mistake. Okay. Yeah. No, because they're talking about delegating it to the districts. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, this yeah, is a need to make that. That's you us. just point out a major okay. mistake with this. That's us. This should actually be the dis, the individual district. I yeah. think though this is a is this an SU? I have to ask Jamie that. This may be an SU policy, but it must apply. So would the SU board then have to decide for every individual no, district? No, this says district it's, flagpoles it's, it's here. District. Yeah, so it's contradictory. Flagpole at the WRBSU district school is yeah. yeah. utilized. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you are guess you well, one, the clean copy. What is yeah. what this? Is, was the attached on the email? But here, it, does, <laughs> it just <laughs> oh, yeah, this no, is May 2023. This is well, that's it. That district being page. each individual school, to each no. okay. So, and okay. only the main so we didn't a, a, we may a, not have gotten the correct. Um, I've got a September. You have September, right, yeah. and uh, Lindy just provided that. It was found on the website. This was what was attached to Christie's email. Christie's email. So we, we, in our packet, we may have just been um, correct. Let me look at the <laughs> SU. Hold on. Let me go back and look at the SU. What we well, got. Well, on May 2023. 20, right? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm a little off on the days of the week sometimes. No. But. So I'm not sure. Usually in the right year. Sure exactly. I'm not it's sure just, where this came from. It, it, under management and control of the September right. That's what it uh, says draft, on the first sentence says the district's flagpole mm -hmm. includes our side, are oh, under the control okay. and management of the district. So I think What's, what got changed is so so I think that's got changed. Is it's the it's the one to What's it's the it fourth right? paragraph that says only the main flagpole at the White River Valley SU District School, and ours says 
um, building. Guest, all yeah. lowercase. Yeah. Or said guest. Oh. Yep, and then guest. Is See, her says oh. building. At, no. at, at A, White River Valley SU District, district School, which building. is, we're part yeah. of the, a, yeah. we're one of those districts. So schools. it's correct. Okay. So I want to. I think Ethan raises a good question. That is, are some things important to fight for? And in my opinion, yes. And the equity policy that the policy committee went through, I mean, I don't know how many drafts. And and, and, and there were people fighting it right up to the end. In my opinion, absolutely. That's what we're part of. That's, that's a core principle of what education is all about. What is less convincing here is that because we say no flag will flag on, that, on our flagpoles other than the United, our country's flag and our state flag, doesn't mean that that's the only way they can, we can communicate points of view. We can do it through banners. We can do it through uh, stories, websites, um, uh, uh, um, Facebook, whatever the case is. We can right. to talk about things like Black Lives Matter and everything else. It, it, just, it just seems to me that flagpole and those flags can get people aroused and it, it, it divides us when there are other opportunities for right. for points of view to be conveyed through our system, um, and that's why I'm I'm kind of I'm pulling back from my original thoughts, saying maybe that's a a, a role that protects the freedom of speech uh, of our students. In fact, whatever the case is, at the same time it allows us to govern. Um, Justine has a hand up. Oh, good. <laughs> I was just wondering, it was kind of what I was thinking about is similar to kind of what Bill was talking about in that um, might there be some sort of inclusion in this policy that allows for a discourse or a response like, you know, such and such platform will be available to anybody, who, you know, so it's not just like a free for all kind of response system and maybe someone, some committee or something has to field that and deal we, with that it will come up but I mean, I mean according to this policy we would be that board that would be presented I, I, right no at, at first but i mean after it goes up there's going to be some more stuff and i don't know if there could be some sort of something else spelled out a little more about uh public response or well they would certainly encourage them to come to meetings after yeah okay if that's what we want or there could be a, another group of people that feels the first round of that i don't know I, it was just something i felt like might be helpful to be included in here because it's it might it will happen amy um i'm i'm not sure what my opinion on this as a whole is yet um so uh you know i don't want to speak to in any uh way on that but I do understand what you are saying, and wouldn't there be that the flagpole could be just for the state flag and the United States flag, and there are other avenues of flags, just not up on that flagpole that could be attached to, you know, like the, um, the farmers market ones be, yes. that are just that are indeed flown with the proper mm -hmm. approval. Um, but it would be, it's a hard and fast, this is the only thing on our flagpole. Um, again, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I just thought of that when you were just Can talking. we ask our administration? That's what um, I was yeah. So I actually, just food for thought. When um, kids are passionate about something and they are shut down the opportunity like it's taken away from them without even being at the table to be part of the discussion. Because I understand we're talking about flags in this particular um, this policy, and also like I understand you know the American flag and the state flag, but um, it is a kids' building. Our buildings are kids' buildings, and we are in service to our kids. Like everything I do is to hopefully make a good decision for a kiddo, and so to have some adults say you can't even have the opportunity to bring forth your case mm -hmm. one way or the other about why this should be flown in front of your school feels a little like we're shutting down their student voice. And I have seen that backfire in some situations where, oh, you know, kiddos didn't go through the right avenue, but they feel like it's their freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. and it is to wear whichever flag they would like to into a school. Like it can go, 
putting my high school teacher hat on, like switching gears. I'm a little out of practice, but switching <laughs> gears. Um, it can backfire if you take that voice away without even allowing them the opportunity to present their argument um, of why it should be flown. And I think it's good to have something in place one way or the other. At the issue. Other than, no, we're just not even going to entertain the idea. At, at the the SU you. board meeting, um, Sarah Root made this exact point that she thought it could be an extraordinary um, exercise for the student to have to prepare, um, you know, they have to go through some process, which mm -hmm. is outlined in here. They have to prepare a presentation. They have to get a sponsor. Right. It's not like they can just show up and say, we want to do this flag. It's like they have to do something to earn the right to even present it to us. And then we get to make a decision, which I think we would make very clear to them. And she thought that was a very beneficial experience that we should encourage because it's democratic the democratic process. It's being active within your community. Yeah, which is exactly. The yeah. Ultimate goal well, like of citizenship. Mm -hmm. So um, to me, I, I can understand both sides of the argument, but in thinking for kids, mm -hmm. I think they should have the opportunity to present something to Jamie, to the school board, um, why they believe this should be flown. And, and some of that involves a lot of teaching, right? Like why is this the equivalent or should be held in the same conjunction with our American flag or with our state flag. That's a huge piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't really read it well enough um, to know if that's part of the process that needs to be described in there. But to me, that would be an important piece. Yeah. Like oh, you're, there's a lot of history and significance behind our flags, both state and country. So why should this particular flag be flown in conjunction with them? That's an important piece. Um, do you, I mean, did you read this as, you know, not. required proposal components provides exclusionary criteria described in the policy. Visual replication, the exact flag rationale that explains the proposed flag supports, how this proposed flag supports the WRVSU vision, which means they'd have to read that. Yep. And they'd have to know that. And student learning outcomes propose time frame for raising up to four months. Um, evidence of support from faculty advisor sponsor demonstrating student support for the proposed flag. So obviously, if they go out and they get a, um, you know, in one of our schools, they got twenty people to sign that this was a good idea. That's that's some serious barricading. But I would say, and I would add or have the conversation at the policy level under required proposal components, but. You know, what, what is your passion or desire around how this should be flown in conjunction with our state flag and our American flag? Those yeah, are two yeah. really important mm -hmm. things. And that is frequently, in my experience, also where the community will step in because there will be lots of questions from outside groups about mm -hmm. why is this near the American flag flag? Because there's a lot of protocol around that for different organizations. So mm -hmm. that would be my thought. Um, um, I'm afraid Mitch uh, only can take it in during public comment and not, this is just for board communication. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Sorry, we, That's okay. if you, we'll get, we do have another board comment period coming up later. Public comment. Public comment, I mean, um, and uh, we'll certainly, please hold your comment till then, we'd love to hear it. Okay, yeah. thanks. Um, well, this is the first reading. Um, <laughs> it will go back, do we, if we, I think obviously you've heard our conversation, Patrick. Mm -hmm. You can take it back to the policy committee and, and hear that there's some. We have some thinking to do. Yeah, I, yeah. And I do, um, I would like you to bring uh, what Lindy just said of, about um, the students. Why is, why is this a passionate, why are they passionate about, or how does this work, you know? So we have uh, one be a rational, uh, rational that explains how the proposed flag supports the White River Valley to drive their <laughs> vision, goals, and student learning outcomes. But it's more than the, yeah, so it, it, that is an important piece too. No. And I think also that part of their proposal needs to be why is it for why them? Why to, to, to eat I, the individual? Because I think in that proposal, when it's read publicly, that's an important piece for the public to hear. Yeah. Why is this important to you specifically? Right. Yeah. Your your group of and students should it are be trying held to do this. Equivalent or next to the American yeah. flag or held. the and the state flag. And the state flag. I think it'd also be helpful to to know. Uh, we talk about the state flag. Uh, does does the state what is Montpelier the state house? What do they flag? A fly. Um, 
think it's both. Last time I no, uh, but are they do they they accountants and uh, agree to to um, fly other flags um, supporting uh, important a uh, passionate I cause? I do re I do remember there was a big controversy in Rochester many years ago when they wanted to do the PWO POW MIA flag. Mm. And there was a strong controversy about that because some were very anti the, the war, but then supporting troops. And I think it did fly for, do you remember this? I, th I thought, I remember it flew for a couple of years and then finally, I think sort of quietly, it, it went away. And I don't think it's there anymore. But um, but I, yeah, I think, I, I don't know. I always think it's worth, personally, I always feel it's worth giving a voice mm -hmm. and make them make their case. And if they don't do it well enough, we'll know. It'll be very clear to us, and we'll ask them some tough questions. You know, mm -hmm. what does the American flag mean to you? What does the state flag mean to you? Mm -hmm. If they don't mean well, I don't really know. I don't even know what the state flag <coughs> is. Well, then before we're going to give you approval, you need to go back and understand what's on that state flag and why it means that. Right. And, we'll, and if we can incorporate what Lindy's saying, I think that will allow us to understand their intentions prior mm -hmm. to doing it. I would ask them, Patrick, that because we're, we're divided here we're, if we haven't taken a vote a straw vote and we all have open minds but yeah i think policy committee has to look at the pros and cons of keeping what we've got now which is the state flag and the country's flag so versus opening that up and looking and i think that was the request of the supervisory union board mm -hmm. was to go back and look at both of those and to see um what makes sense and part of that might be amending this draft to make it um, um, with some of the suggestions here about why it's important and why it's important to the students and that sort of thing. Um, Can I ask a follow-up question to that, Bill? Sure. So I view policy as a way to be supported in my decision-making process and not necessarily have to be reactive to something. So if we, I'm just kind of food for thought, something to kind of sink your teeth into and think about a little bit. If you're saying that we're only going to fly these two and that's going to be our policy, aren't you opening the door for folks to want to know why and how come they're not having the opportunity to be able to do that as so many other school districts have allotted throughout the state? I hear both sides of it. I'm just, I'm just trying to yeah. play devil's advocate because then it maybe well, puts my, me yeah, as an administrator my, my more or as reactive. That um, and as being a, a former student activist and, and marched and, and did all sorts of things, right. what I believed in. Um, again, we're not saying you cannot feel and you cannot, this is, we're not saying you cannot express your opinion and verbalize it and communicate it effectively to the public. The flag pole is only one avenue. And we're saying that we want to keep that but we're not saying no about all the other things that you're learning about in the classroom you're discussing in your clubs you're talking with your parents about and you want action um so it, again it's it's not the only avenue we're not just slamming the door we're saying this avenue is closed but you have all these other opportunities to be heard um and that includes so that's important and and you reinforcing that point and being i remember in college and when the college says no on something and you know we got upset about that but um so there i think there's 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 risks on both sides of of uh, turning off students and angering students and sounding like um we're not um, doing what we're our actions are different than our speech and I think we need to be very careful on how we phrase this but on the same time I'm a strong believer that if we're going to succeed in our educational mission we've got to be very very careful about um, di possibly dividing our community and um, we're going to go some tough decisions one of them is uh, budgets for instance we're going to be asking at some point for um, we've had cut. We've had <coughs> budget reductions. Tax uh, this taxpayer is paying less. But sometime we're going to be asking more, and we're going to need the support of those taxpayers. So I'm just saying, sounds too cautious. Um, but I, that's where I like the policy committee to really look at this. And you've raised some really good questions. Yeah, and let's I, see what they come ask. up with. And it might be this is the only way. Um, right. And then and we strengthened it 
by doing this X, Y, Z, as you right. suggested, or um, they're, they're going to present us with two alternatives and, and let us, let us. Right. Decide. No, I just, I just ask because oh. to me, if you just say we're only going to do this and that's going to be our policy, it, it always will I wasn't put being us on. Buried, yeah. It'll, it'll put us on the reactive versus mm -hmm. being able to encourage people, students, especially to be an active part of their community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And go through the democratic process. Um, I have a question. Um, so here we have, you know, it's right here. Yeah. flying the flag up to four months. Yeah. Should there be something that, like, say, say the board approves it, then it flies for a month? Mm -hmm. Should we be revisiting, you know, how how is like, do we have any? Yeah. Mm. Well, it's sort of what this is any feedback from the yeah. public or anything. This is yeah. what Justine was getting at. The idea that after a period of two months, there will be a review of the proposal. Well, I think it should just be even sooner than that. I well, mean, if we does... approve it one month, the next month we should just say, you know, to Lindy or whoever, you know, or to Jamie, how, you know. Well, there is in the actual policy, the last sentence says, I, it's remove. the wrong board, I think, but it's the White River SU board may yeah. remove a previously approved flag should at be any a. time. No, and, I, I, so like and that, I, I understand that. I, I'm just saying like an update the as to, you know, hey, the flag's been up a month. You know, have, has there been any feedback from students or faculty? Or, Did you get that 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 you know. should actually be a WRVSU district? District yeah. may remove yeah. a previously approved In the current flag. version, it, it just says the board. Okay. Um. Here's... Here's oh Justine. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. No. Uh, I, you know, I also want I wanted to bring up that um, it, that we're, here we're discussing um, maybe having a different platform than the the main flagpole, um, and and our thoughts on potential division of the community with and our concerns for taxpayers and things like that. But I also wanted to bring up that not using the main flagpole may create the same kind of division having be a secondary platform. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there as like the devil's advocate because I can see oh. it uh, from the other side as well, saying, well, that's, you know, a, not the, the flagpole, that's something else. So just wanted to put that out there and get it. I would, I would like the policy committee to come back with a clear statement of why we fly the American flag and the state of Vermont flag. I think we need that to start because so otherwise if we don't know why we fly those two flags and it's clearly stated for anyone to read mm -hmm. then we don't know what this policy is mm -hmm. we and don't even do know what we're asking from anybody else yeah. yeah so yeah. we need to do the work first before we can ask them to do that work yeah right. yeah it's a good, point. good point yeah thank you anything further on the flag Let's go to our action policy adoption. Nine one. Act to adopt policy B thirty five social media. I don't believe this has changed much since when we read it last. But I think I read it the last. <clears throat> is the code B? Oh no, here it is. Number five. Shoot, I don't. I don't think I've ever paid attention to which one I read. Well, um, we can also uh, move this and then we can discuss it. Anyone want to, to we accept the one revised supervising social media policy? Can someone move that, please? Somebody who's good at with social media, please move it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not me. Uh, All right. I'll, I'll move it to, 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 to adopt the Rochester Stock Ridge Unified that's District. That's where we're at. The actual adopting mm -hmm. the, okay. the social, social media. The White, White River Valley Supervisor Union social media policy. Yes. And is there a second? So Amy, second. Amy moved it. I'll give Patrick Hudson the second. Is there any discussion before we vote? Good flag policy discussion. Yeah, I think. I think you got a draft that's not the latest draft. No, we, we found that. Yeah, I, I apologize. Yeah. Okay. No discussion? Yeah. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. 
social media policy policy passes. That's a good one. We have a second one to take action on. Verification of student residency for tuition payment policy and corresponding affidavit. Policy. So I noticed that the affidavit nothing was changed from when I had uh, Guardian one and two. <laughs> yeah, I had brought up that Guardian one and two for the motor vehicles. Oh, you're right. Um, one, that, that the Guardian back. two is requested to please list make and model color yep. and number plate of vehicle you drive the most frequently. Guardian one does not need to provide that. Yep. Um, and there was a capitalization was error on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was page uh, page five in uh, section two B. Um, well, the capitalization is not changed. I don't. I think you could adopt these with those. That's okay. not a substitute. To okay. the affidavit. It's just okay. You must have discussed that in September. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was just that. Um, are we are are we asking both guardians to provide make, model, and color and number plate of their vehicle they drive most frequently, or are we going to eliminate them, or are we just want guardian two to <laughs> do it? <laughs> Once we move the motion, um, um, once oh, have we have we did we move this? No, no. no. Uh, let's move it first, and then get a discussion. Uh -huh. um, so, make a motion to accept policy C thirty five verification of student residency for tuition payment policy and corresponding affidavit. Okay, I'll move it. Moved by Bill Edgerton. Do I have a second? Second. second. Second by Justine Kavakis. Now we're in discussion. And the discussion is, are we okay? The superintendent's advisors were okay with some spelling and inconsistencies in the form, but that that will not substantially change. You've made a note so that that'll get mm -hmm. fixed. Good. Um, and yeah, sorry, I missed that in your notes from September. Yeah. Um, I had um, anything further to, and I haven't, there's an article in the New York Times Sunday Magazine um, for homeless kids in rural America, staying in school can seem next to impossible, but open, but often, but often it's their only source of help. And it talks about it, it uh, just kind of a hidden thing where it's hard to get kids enrolled in schools because schools have policies about what you have, the hoops you have to go through. And these are kids that live in, um, you know, uh, temporary housing. They're they're moving around. I mean, they're they don't know where the next paycheck comes from, or 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 support, or uh, donations. And so my question was, because I have not read this thoroughly, and I don't just to to Jamie or to anybody that's better equipped than I'm to answer the question. Um, how would we, would this allow us to do the right thing? Yeah. Um, it, it gives the flexibility to do the right thing. I guess that's my question. So, it doesn't have to be an so ink, there's but. actually federal law called McKinney Vento in okay. regards to transitional housing. So that supersedes any of our policies. And what I mean by that is, is anytime a family is in transitional housing and or doubled up, we have a transitional housing person that we stipend that works with the state of Vermont and the other school districts that we work with to identify, do they qualify for transitional housing? And if the answer is yes, then we actually receive something called a McKinney Vinto grant that then allows us to provide things like transportation, clothing. Sometimes we've purchased like refrigerators for families. That's federally funded program. And the way that, that works is, is that typically the, the team will make a decision that the student stays in the district they were previously attending because you want to provide regularity for them. Yeah. So that supersedes this. The purpose of this policy is more so in the affidavit to try to fish out when we have concerns actually about second homes. Mm -hmm. And what this policy is really trying to get to is, is it the primary residency or not? Um, and so, hence why the affidavit is cumbersome. It somewhat is cumbersome to try to flesh out, is this actually your primary residence or is it actually your secondary residence? 
Right. Um, and so that's what this is trying to handle. The the idea of someone who has lost housing or is housing insecure and has had to double up, that would fall under, under McKinney-Vento. And actually, the way that that works is it actually says the student could choose whatever district they want to attend in the state based on need and what makes sense for that family and student. Well, that trumps this. That's reassuring because um, obviously there's some issues in the state of Ohio and uh, uh, kids are falling behind. And, and so um, it's nice that we, we have federal support to do the right thing. And we also have a policy that we're tightening up to make sure that um, the loopholes are uh, unnecessary loopholes are, are being closed on. on as, as you're suggesting on the second right and a reminder about this part it's for tuition paying right this is not what we would use to enroll at rochester yeah. oh okay this is We're only for remember, this is tuition oh, pay. Okay. so this is someone joins our district we've never laid eyes on them they go and register at another high school example that. Hanover. we get a bill and we've got no way to verify residency mm -hmm. then we would say to them to the high school Hanover, we need you to help us by filling this out so we can determine residency and verify it. Okay. So but this is not for our students. This is not okay. enrollment into your elementary school. No, this is you move in, we don't know you, we haven't we haven't certified residents. Like school choice, for instance, here yes. in Stockton. Right. Yes. Thank you. Just like I, I went to school in New York right. and the town paid it, but like who's to say somebody did the same thing, went to some academy. Right, and didn't actually live here. Yes. Yeah, it was just their yeah. second home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right, there's always someone who talks yeah. on the list. Yeah. Okay. Just one point, Jamie, it doesn't actually say that. Right. On the front, it doesn't say this is regards to, tu well, tuition, I guess, for tuition payment policy. Yeah. I guess Where are you it's because just that you I didn't, it's right on the front of page. We, of the we have a policy on registry mm -hmm. right. okay okay so yeah so different. it does say for tuition okay. payment it's yeah residency okay. for tuition payment policy. okay anything else on this we're ready to vote yep okay all in favor of to adopt policy c35 verification of student residency for tuition payment policy and corresponding affidavit signify by saying aye 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 yeah let's have it okay we are on to draft one student support budget. Take it away. So you have a copy of that in front of you. And I just want to go over some of really the changes. Um, so if you look at the second line item, so remember student support is myself, um, the two administrative assistants, literacy interventionist, school counselor, nurse, uh, regular ed paraeducators and substitutes. <coughs> Um, so under changes, if you look at intervention, we have increased that by 0.5. Currently our math uh, intervention is, interventionist is paid through ESSER funds and, and, title. and title funds. And so we will, that funding will run out after two years. So starting to build that position into our budget as a constant moving forward. So it's not in shock. Mm -hmm. um, when the funding decreases um so just to jump in there so i would add that is one of those positions we expect title to continue to fund half that math interventionists we don't foresee that going away the other half that esther is going away and so this is one of those positions as we continue to build the budget and look at the yield and things you may see us adjust whether it's 0.5 this year or just 0.25 and then we add it Another 0.25. I just I share that to let you know this is all of it in to make it whole and cover it moving forward. That is one of those areas, though, as we start to really fine tune this budget through the upcoming months. There is a little wiggle room there. I would certainly advise that we try to budget part of that 0.5 in so that we're building it mm -hmm. so that it's not a whole one time expense. I will have a bigger sense of how we can do as all the rest of the figures come in as we go, and of course, the yield. Yeah. Um, and then the other um, adjustment is under regular education pairs. So this includes uh, paraeducator in each um, 
preschool classroom, which is part Pre of licensing. Each preschool classroom? Yes. Uh, we also have a paraeducator who supports a student on a 504 plan. Oh, okay. And yep. includes that one. And then um, this year we have hired a paraeducator um, to support our 1 2 classroom in Rochester. And I'd like to keep that position because it's proving we have several students who need just additional support and it helps mm -hmm. benefit the teacher to have that extra set of hands. She's running everything. She's been trained in our spelling program. She's been trained in literacy things. So it's been an added benefit to that. Right, it's helping keeping everybody general ed. Yeah. Ideally. It's early intervention. Yeah. Early and then it's the flexibility with having one regular ed para that you have on the district. Mm -hmm. Let's say a student all of a sudden spiked and needed, you know, significant behavioral plan needs, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, the way that our district worked is we would do a special ed referral in order to get the para, right? Like, that's a crazy way to go. Like, it shouldn't be that's why we do that, right? Like, if we have a student who all of a sudden had a crisis happen in his family outside of school and spiking behaviorally. It would be great for us to have a regular para who's working with Claire Martin, our, our board certified behavioral analyst, to implement a behavior plan like immediately, right? Like within a week, As not waiting the for the whole special ed yeah. referral process to go through. And meanwhile, this student's been struggling for months. So that's how yeah. special ed's been misused for you. Well, no, I, I feel like we just haven't built up our targeted, when you hear me talk about targeted, like before special ed, I just don't think we've done a good enough job of building that up. It was really like we had classroom teacher and then special ed. Yeah. And our menu of supports in between just wasn't vast enough. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't have a, a bench. We didn't have depth to it. Right. It really is ranged to what Sam and myself can implement mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. provide support. So it's, it's really giving a person that could implement an intensive behavioral plan with the idea being that that plan would fade. Okay. So we're not like contracting a BI service, as example, from another service provider to implement. Like we have someone who was trained that could do that type of work when the need happened across either of your buildings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, question, uh, where is, I, I thought that Outdoor Ed was funded originally by ASM funds. Is that true? And is and is that now worked into the budget? It will be in your first draft of the rest of your teaching. Course. Okay. Yeah, okay. you'll see that. So it's, to be but that is one well. of the things we're changing over from ESSER to yes. us. Yep. And we're adding it to Pathways in outdoor. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Um, and then substitutes, there really is a need, um, which is why you see quite a large jump. We do have one floating sub between both buildings and it's already been utilized. Um, mm -hmm. And to continue that, but then also just, you know, for as long as people have to quarantine for five days with COVID or with symptoms, like that forever impacts your, your substitute line for a certain period of time, as well as we did have several other health issues happen last year and better to be prepared then. Plus subs, um, I hate to say it, but they're economic, they're actually an economic way to help out in the classroom. Absolutely. Yeah. So is this mm -hmm. um, increase uh, for um, a full-time sub that you're talking about no, no that's we, in, that's already been in the budget and this is, is just in addition to this is like yeah, in addition to the full-time yeah. but this would be a regular position we're looking we for. already have the regular position <clears throat> so you're just looking for somebody to fill in the, this, this, are, is just, this, is, this is like looking to cover what we've been spending the last two years right. uh, we're adjusting the budget right. based oh, on to sure on to, sorry yeah, and these sorry. are just your sub <clears throat> list that you're calling <clears throat> right. can you come into that not so the, this bump if you look and some of the items we overspent, subbing was one of them. Mm -hmm. yep. And so this is to try to adjust to get us more aligned in our actuals. Excellent. Somebody go in dinner or something? It sounds great. Probably it's my cologne. <laughs> What's that? Someone I don't, probably is it my cologne? Uh, that or the chewing gum. Um, help me here. I forgot. Uh, the substitute teachers, their salary schedule is something that was separate from what we just negotiated. Yeah. Or is it part of that? They're not part of the CBA. They aren't. So we pay substitute teachers, I believe, right now we are at one oh eight. Yeah. Hundred and eight dollars a day. Okay. And does there need to be any change of that number to either attract or make or keep 
substitute teachers at all. So I've been trying to pay attention of it and stay yeah, on the curve of it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So that's one of the things when we come together regionally as superintendents, we talk about like, where is everybody at yeah. paying their subs? How are you doing with subs? Mm -hmm. We are in the middle in regards to competitiveness around it. And I feel like geographically we do all right. Okay. Um, I have not received feedback on us losing subs or not getting subs based on what we're paying. I have bumped it every year since mm -hmm. I've come on a little bit. And that's my bump has been based on what other SUs around us have yeah. been doing. To keep competitive, I yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. support that. <coughs> Second question is that um, we've got a goal that um, by 2025, uh, we're going to meet or exceed our literary and math uh, aspirational yeah. goal set by yeah. Act 46. and. Um, and the State Board of Education. And so my question to both of you is, um, will these increases, particularly in intervention, regular ed, paraprofessionals, uh, and, and substitutes, help us um, achieve that goal? Um, um, or is it, it has no real bearing to whether or not we're gonna make it or not? Um. For in terms of inter intervention and to have the support of an additional regular education fair, I, I do believe it will help us reach that goal. I mean, already this person who's filled that role has been attending all the training, so she can also work with students for early intervention purposes and uh, <clears throat> just provide more learning opportunities for kiddos, which is great. And the same with intervention, it, uh, students who need to receive targeted intervention support and academics are receiving that support. So um, mm -hmm. obviously the ultimate goal is for them to work themselves out of a job, but mm -hmm. right now we have what we need. Yeah. And substitutes, a um, the stressor that puts on a classroom teacher to decide whether to call out or not because they're not feeling well, it, I think that stressor is not here for us right now, maybe a little who's going where some mornings, but um, mm -hmm. I think the fact that they know that there will be coverage means people are taking care of themselves, which helps prevent burnout and other things in the long run. Mm -hmm. When we get back here faster, I mean, exactly. it helps keep our kids from not catching it. Right, it decreases the <clears throat> attendance. Yeah. My, my question comes about with um, our detailed lesson plans being left, because I know certainly in just from my, my son's class, that definitely with substitutes, the behavioral, the educational, a lot of stuff goes on. That's what I actually thought you were asking is that, you know, if you've got a class that's suddenly getting two and three substitutes a week, that that is definitely affecting the educational mm -hmm. forward movement. Well, and I'm just, and just how rigorous are we being about we, if there is a sub that there is a, there are sub plans. As rigorous as I can be. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. if someone is really sick, to their plans. We have emergency plans. We have emergency yeah. plans. Yeah. So that's not quite the same as like, this is a planned absence or we're not super sick. Um, mm -hmm. And for instance, I had a, a teacher who called out this morning who was sick and was able to take her own lesson plans that I had saw, seen at the end of last week and she turned them into the sub plans for the class today and the class went through. Okay. That's, I mean, that's the Those kind of, are steps that are in but that's place. Because, you know, they used to require, I remember when I was teaching, you know, you used to have to have a series numbers of, of yep. plans and you used to actually have all your lesson plans. Not that I'm saying we need that because that's, uh, you know, draconian, I think, in some ways and doesn't trust your teacher. Um, but I do think making sure that we're getting as rigorous we can in the educational Absolutely, in and some of that is also part of the evaluation system too and conversations I have behind closed doors with mm -hmm. folks when it becomes Obviously, yep, yeah. good. Yeah. Just so long as you're aware of it. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. I have a question, um, the guidance line, mm -hmm. um, underneath, is the the blank line with the one FTE is just, just needs just, to be erased? It just didn't, it just yeah. didn't get erased. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was wondering. Like, so I so <laughs> the, um, the guidance line, uh, that proposed amount, as I see it, says all object codes. So that's encompassing that entire department. Yes. Like mm -hmm. uh, all, all of their, okay. Salary benefits, supplies. And their supplies and everything, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that's what I assumed. All right. Other questions? 
Good start. Good start. Thank you. And thank you for your. Oh, uh, oh can oh we my. please, please get dates on these drafts? Mm -hmm. Please. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Because I pull my packet apart and put stuff in different locations. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's like, which, which draft is it? I don't need to know which draft. So if I, I just know what date, then. The it's policies fine. the policies have draft 5, 928. Yeah. On them. So, Thank yeah, you. that would be great. Very good. Uh, 10 2, you can give us a little feedback, Jamie, on EEI. Yeah, so, um, so right now, what's happening is, is for us to be able to leverage ESSER like you saw in the proposed budget, I have to do concept approval with the agency of education on how that money is being used. And so, what that means is Eric's been sitting down with Tara and building out the budget and saying, here's how you know this. 80,000 ESSER is going to go towards improvements around. That's right, it's ESSER, isn't it? Yeah, it's S, a big chunk of it's ESSER. So I need every time we do that, we have to get a concept approval. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a lot of legwork and, and work behind the scenes. We're doing it. Mm -hmm. Feel good about it. Everything we're doing is around controls, fresh air. So, it, you know, the ESSER money is not going toward lighting. It's going towards controls, fresh air, heat. So I'm confident we're going to get it. We're just... I don't want to come to you without having secured that money, meaning, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to ask you to approve a budget until I know the AOE has given us concept approval on all those things. So yeah. that's what's happening mm -hmm. in your district and others. We are still good to go. The, the um, pellet grant for the 250000 I just saw email come back from um, Chris Heine about that. Um, and so I feel good about that revenue. Mm -hmm. And the other big one is we got some money uh, from the Agency of Education through ARP ESSER to do some work here around um, control upgrades mm -hmm. and, and fresh air. So, good. and that's looking good. I saw an email exchange happening around there. So that's what's happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And Eric will be here with those final numbers. For you to look at in November, I think he'll be looking for you to take action either in November or December. I know we still have that like one little chunk of revenue around the hundred thousand. I think we'll know whether that is smaller or not by then. The hope is mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. um, but we'll have that number in November as well. There's two ways we can go about that. As a board, you could budget it as a one-time expense, or we could use um, capital improvement funds, and or you could do a little bit of both. Yeah. We could budget some in operations in our budget for next year to cover that one-time expense and use some capital improvement funds. I think we're just going to have to wait that out as, yeah. we, as we go well, into it in December. High school, Oops. the high school issue being an extraordinary expense too, the heating. Well, that's this year's budget. Mm -hmm. okay. What you're deciding in that's December right. is next year's next budget. Year's. And, yeah. and, and this proposal for me is just so extraordinary and the price tag is really so small yeah. compared to the entire project well, we just that, yeah you just the, saw a budget proposal that's up that much right yeah and this deferred maintenance has been going on for years so yeah. the time is right that we yeah. should act oh i just had more of a um i never really heard from eei about like the actual pellet acquisition and since we are just we're just discussing that we got our um uh locked in a price for our oil how does it work with the pellets do we what are the providers do we lock i buy in pellets already yeah we lock in prices so you have sharon, sharon has a pellet okay and not only is the idea of sharon remember part of this was efficiency right. and they're guaranteeing it that we'll bulk buy pellets yeah okay mm -hmm. so the uh, proposal is tumbridge would go to pellet bethel would go to a pellet oh well wow. sharon would go to a pellet that's great Rochester would go okay to so we can bulk buy pellets like we bulk. Okay, great. very cool. So Thank you. Yeah. Um, remind me, because I have no memory, um, does this include the roof at all? No. So we've still got it, because that's a big deal. And you'll see that that is that line item is part of the strategic plan. Okay. You'll see the Rochester roof as one of the highlights that we need we to have a number yet? for. Do we have any number on that? Have we yeah, it was. It's close. I mean, a year ago we priced it. It was almost three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to see it as a higher number in the strategic plan because I'm expecting everything to go up. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it's one of those things. 
has to happen. That we're going to need to yeah be budgeting for. And I think I placed it in phase two. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But example, that would be feedback for the board to give. Yep. Yeah. But yes, we proved that. Or, or just like I, we need to move it up. If we think it, you have it in stage three, I think it should be state phase two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I broke I broke our our capital improvements into three phases. Is what I tried to do. Yeah. Right. And you'll see everything you've been hearing about with controls, heating, and lighting in phase one, and then some other deferred maintenance in phase two and phase three. And you said we're going to talk about this at the retreat. That was your idea. Yeah. Give but, the feedback, and yep. then we you'd, you'd get them. okay. This is how I work. Just kind of click, 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 crack. Good. Further questions? Any? I, I think we're in good shape. On that. Okay. The Rochester High School winter heating update from facility committee. Well, I should have told you. <laughs> Take it away, Bill. Oh, go. Right. Uh, in your packet, I think page five or six should be minutes, and I want to commend our scribe yeah. for the excellence in um, really both in format and, and uh, in presentation and, and just get into the meat of the issue. Um, uh, it does a great job of, of telling the story of what happened. We had the task force that Ethan, you set up um, meet. We met on um, Tuesday, September 20th, had a wonderful meeting um, and really got into it. I mean, we really talked about um, issues and alternatives and uh, different approaches. Um, and I think uh, these minutes um, tell the story quite well. And the issue was how to best cover our heating costs, projected heating costs for this winter. And we're talking about over 17,000 gallons and approximately $66,000. Um, and we didn't, you know, we're, we're not gonna fine tooth that. This is a, just an estimate anyway, and we won't know until the end of the winter, but it appears to be if we have money left over, uh, up to the good. Um, just say Vic just got on, so just if we need anything. Sorry. Oh, hi, Vic. We're thank you, Vic. I don't know if you've been listening. Yeah, but he, we're just he's been on. He's been on. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't see he it. just turned his camera off. Very good. Thank you, Vic. Um, the second point was that, um, and and uh, Pat Harvey, representing this Rochester Select Board, was very eloquent in saying that. Water bottle. Um, the town budget is under distress right now with the unanticipated increases, uh, a lot in fuel costs that are, um, and they're talking about having to roll over somewhat of a deficit spending plan for this year because they can't, their budget doesn't meet it into the next uh, year, which would be fiscal year, if they're on a fiscal year basis, 24. So she was, um, just said that, she supports the project. She wants the, the high school um, to to have a, a, a life that can serve not only Rochester. And she she told us that um, back in the day, it, it wasn't the Rochester High School in the sense that kids from all neighboring towns went there and were educated there and benefited from the education and excellence there. So, um, but it was very hard for the town to directly support. Uh, this effort to cover uh, unanticipated heating costs. So we talked about um, options on how we might do that. And um, we came up with a, a kind of a three-legged um, plan where uh, we divvy up that $66,000 into three pieces, each piece around $22,000. One would be to, and we've got a wonderful start with the repurposing committee and what they're fundraising. And just minutes does a nice job of explaining. Patrick had three or four wonderful ideas of how to advance fundraising from the communities, not only Rochester, but the surrounding communities that will be benefiting if the high school repurposing project is successful. And, um, and Vic can talk about it much better than I can, but they seem to be uh, willing and hopefully able uh, by the end of this fiscal year to come up with a third of that anticipated additional cost. The second leg of this uh, thing that we were talking about was the support of the trust funds um, in Rochester. 
and Rochester, uh, this is new to me, has uh, uh, trust funds that are um, administered through and then under the control of the Rochester trustees of public funds. And there were, but they're also, and, and Amy was wonderful in having that in our annual report on page 20, um, the bigger trust funds that are actually under the control of this board. And um, the largest one is the Kirkpatrick Fund, uh, which I don't believe is restricted. So it's under control of this board. It has the most money. Um, and so it, it seemed to be a possibility, a real viable possibility that um, uh, we would have the town trustees contribute and, and, and we would vote to utilize our largest uh, trust fund um, as well. And I haven't heard any uh, report um, back on whether the Rochester trustees of public funds have been um, approached and whether or not um, they're supportive of this, but that would be the second one. And that would lead if 22 and 22, the final third 22,000 um, for um, SU or ARSA budgeting. Um, and I think we believe that every, I think possible should be made to uh, raising that $22,000 not to have a negative impact on school, student outcomes. Um, that's, that's the gold star here. Um, but we thought that would be doable as well for a year. And then the budgeting process that we've started here for um, fiscal year 24, um, because this is not only a one year issue, uh, we would have to be looking for ways to incorporate it into the RSED budget, but it would be a third of the 66,000 of that number is good. It's not 66,000. Um, and, um, but we'd have to revisit this next year, but I think we need to be thinking, looking ahead strategically that. Um, uh, and that was something we discussed, correct? Yeah. That, that we needed to look forward next year yep. into adding this to our budget. Well, we was that also something that, that we adding had, what that, Harvey had mm -hmm. discussed also having that discussion as well with the select board in Rochester? Right, well, the okay. thing that we do know is that there's going to be a vote of the Rochester town on March, at the March town meeting, yeah. whether they want to acquire, the, the, if they would like the town to acquire this building. Um, and then then we'll, we'll know. We'll either know, yes, the town is gonna take it and we can, we can go from there, or no, the town's not gonna take it. We do kind of need to, to be ready though, that we we could continue to have this building after March and therefore we do need to be thinking that way. If the town does not wanna take it in March, we're gonna to need to sit down very seriously and very quickly and decide what we wanna do. Um, but it doesn't make sense for us to um, think it's just gonna just go away that quickly. We should really be prepared, but we do know that we're gonna, if it, is not taken over by the town, we're going to have some serious decisions to make. So in do we a, need in to a, include that full budget ourselves for next year? You know what I, I mean? I, with, I with, hear the, you. with the possibility that they might not be able to help? Well, because they get voted down. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we, see, I mean but right. we don't want to end up serious, easily see right. that at least, at least it would be. A so we should be prepared. It's a very divisive issue. Yeah. To put uh, the heating the high school back into the budget, I mean, even just us taking, you know, whatever funds, and this is the part of it that you told me that I haven't heard yet, which is that you came up with a plan, or Lindy and you came up with a plan for where we could find this money, um, that it's coming out of, you know, unfilled um, staffing positions. Um, you know, who knows, who knows what the reaction of... Uh, and positions are not like we haven't tried to fill it. No, 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 of course. It's yeah, just, yeah. Uh, I'm aware of that. Well, I think at this point, we don't need to necessarily decide our, our 23, 24 budget, but we do need to be looking towards that and thinking about what we do if we want to put it right. towards that. And I think we should talk with the administration about what their feelings are as well. The immediate is that our current budget that we're in and heating it for the year and that we've come up with this plan That's that right. is we, we would hope is acceptable that we take 
um, endowment money, the Rochester endowment money we put towards it, and we do take a portion of the current budget. Um, what do we know, Vic? Do we have a recent amount on what Rochester has raised from Rochester, Envision Rochester has raised? Repurposing. Repurposing. Committee. Repurposing. Yes. Hi, good evening. Um, we have uh, a little over 2,000, and we really haven't gotten uh, going uh, yet. Um, but uh, we had a conversation with one of the uh, uh, members of the, uh, the trustees of Public Fund State with Barb DeHart who uh, is very receptive to uh, our appeal to uh, provide some funding towards this initiative, that she's asked us to submit a letter um, and include in that letter some briefing on what happens tonight at the school board meeting to get an indication of you know what's the level of collaboration and, and, and mutual interest. And they will meet again on the October 17th. And so we hope to have a decision by October 17th about whether, and if so, to what extent the Rochester public uh, trustees, the public funds would be willing to commit funds uh, to this initiative. Uh, and, um, Pat Harvey is, uh, provided, has provided the alumni list for the uh, school graduates and will be um, in touch with the alumni group and make an appeal to them. Uh, we're still, as I said, Sort of getting organized and we've got several people who are committed to working on this project and uh you know, we wanted to see how things went tonight and then i think we'll be uh you know in a position to uh to really get this going um i've raised the possibility that we prepare to be paying the whole amount ourselves because we just I mean, this is my thing last night. We can't, we can't count on donations. We can't count on the trustees. The only thing we can know is that this bill has to get paid and that we're the ones who pay that bill because it's our property. So I guess for me, it's, you know, I know I, I, I and this is what I was saying last time. I just want to be very clear that we have to be realistic about these expenses and how we're going to pay for them. and. If it turns out that they can raise fifteen, twenty thousand dollars as is their goal, the trustees can throw in fifteen, and we're at thirty-five thousand, and we end up, you know, um, great. That that would be wonderful. That's the best of all positions. But I think I think we have to be ready to pay the whole bill and to also follow through on any pushback we get on that. Well, I think this is a. Um... I think this is an enormous asset that we really need to protect because we, I, I do see that the plan, I do see that there is a viable future in this, that some, that we are just nourishing along just a little bit more. Um, and I think we, I think we should do what we can to protect it. So then I would, I, I, I agree with you. I also think we need to come up with a rationale to the people who say, why are we spending money on keeping this building going? And to the other people who are saying, why are we, if we're spending money to heat this building, why are we not using it? Because I think though you're gonna get the two sides of that and we need to have an answer for them. Yeah, and I think um, Kathleen at the, our meeting talked, Catherine talked Catherine. about um, having a direct link from the repurposing committee's website to the SU website when you click in our our side our our website, our, our, uh, website so website. that um, people wanting more information and we also can utilize letters the editor and other things uh, and social media uh, why all this hard work is being done by volunteers multiple years to preserve protect and give this building another life and uh, that story I totally agree with you needs to be told. Um, it's um quite, i don't think it's hair on fire uh, let's just say that um, there's no alternative you have to tear it down how do you educate kids at the rochester elementary school when that building's being to be deteriorated being torn down i mean just think about that for a second you can't do it all in the summer um and then the loss of the potential like the auditorium like the gym for educational purposes so 
what we're doing is keeping alive the possibility that this school can still be a important educational and community resource for very little money. You talk about this. Um, what's the cost of tearing it down? Was it a million dollars? Oh, no. I mean, so eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand now, uh, now, now, and who knows? So we're talking about twenty-two thousand or, or thirty thousand uh, dollars because we got a building block here versus eight hundred and nine hundred thousand dollars. So I, I, I think it's a, it, it's a gamble. It's an educated it's, um, gamble that we're taking. Sure, no. but I think it's an educated one. Oh, no, I, um, I and I like to think uh, as a member of the Stockbridge the Trustees of Public Funds. That's why we have public funds, mm -hmm. and that's why. Rochester has public funds, and the nice thing is, well, if the Kirkpatrick Fund is under the control of this board, so one of the decisions we need to make is uh, how much do we want to tap? We talked about seventeen thousand or so. Maybe we want to uh, tap more. Maybe we want to tap less. But that's one thing I think should be on a future agenda for us when we're doing our well budget. i think maybe at this point we just need to agree that that is a, a, a yeah. avenue that we would like to that's all we take. have to do tonight. and then when it gets down What's to the more of the nitty-gritty of okay we need to now i don't know the current you don't, you don't know. <laughs> well is there a timeline i mean how i, I mean, asked last time you know obviously the the, the money right. will come at some point from our general fund to pay the heating bill as the bills come in yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. Again, it's going to just get to paid remind paid. everybody: the yeah. voters vote the bottom line budget. Yeah, right. We that's what they vote on, mm -hmm. and so within that bottom line budget is a whole lot of budget lines, mm -hmm. and so we have unanticipated expenses happen in school districts like any other organization, right? And so what wow. we do is we sit down, business manager, principal, and myself, and say, where are we reconciling these budget lines to come out? at 66,000 to the good, right? But, Which is what happened last year. That's tight when you look at the overall budget. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, you know, that we always want to follow the good within there that there wasn't a lot of percentages there of the overall budget. So the same thing would happen this year. What I would say is that we will have a better sense next month to say to you, because Tara will start to run her quarter projections, right? If you remember, you get a first quarter projection. Mm -hmm. Here's where we're at projecting wise, and we'll project that whole expense yeah. in it, overspending. Here's where we look like we're gonna be coming out of. So here's what we're looking for maybe to possibly use this trust to help offset where yeah. we don't think we can make up the difference. So the one problem is that we, we're pretty categorical saying that we were going not going to use the high school for educational purposes and that that was going to be and we were very proud that we took it out of the budget as far as heating it. so i do think we have to accept that we're changing our direction and we're changing the way we're talking uh, you know this just to be aware of that i and totally that agree is, and that we need to be forthright about that that this is what we're doing and not a, mm -hmm. we don't want to hear that Oh, because the you know, right. I know this is the way and it gets worked out, but the fact is I don't want somebody to say, How did you pay for this? I think we need to be very upfront in the minutes saying, oh, we're going to pay for this and we're gonna pay for it. Hopefully we're gonna get a lot of support, but we are going to pay for this to heat the, the building for this year. And I think we have to be very clear about that. And maybe even vote on and I think what changed uh for me was that uh this incredible work that has been done yep. by this repurposing committee and Absolutely. the the grants that they've sought out and the the, 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 the what, yes. what, the, well, what they have done um, has made this a real like this is a real possibility. Mm -hmm. This is this really and so let's let's get this. Yeah. No, I I I, so, I totally support that. Right. I'm just saying that we need to be very clear yep. about our change in how we view this, yep. and that we I I think I don't know if it's appropriate to vote so on. So does it's... that go in the minutes, like you're saying, as far as that we we redirected our position due to the the well thought out information that we've gathered from the repurposing committee? I mean, is this a yep. is this a statement? I think so. <laughs> I mean, you you can make a motion. I mean, it's not one for action. It's not, but but it's not binding. It's, it's not a binding. Yeah, no, it, it's a it's a statement that they well, say yeah, statement that yeah. you're all I mean, I think you could say that you're directing the administration to yeah. heat the building. I mean, that's really yeah. we work for you. So I think your motion may be that. Mm -hmm. 
right? That is a but I think putting the, the putting the reasons in there, putting the reasons in there, which is what I, I was just said because in the, in of the, the minutes, so that extraordinary I the minutes. possible vision presented by the repurposing. Committee. Thank you, I'm Justine. I'm <laughs> Justine, go for it. Um, I think I think maybe we're not bringing up the the fact that the vision by the repurposing committee is in fact if the the town or to purchase the building right yeah yep so, so i think that the you know while we're talking around this this our motivation for paying for it we have to also talk about holding on to the building and that I think all is not option. really the, the plan either I think we should wait till till we get a little further down the road. To talk oh yeah, about. I just I'm saying if we're we're talking about it right now, we want to be open with everyone. If we're changing our tune about how we feel about paying for the building because there's a plan by the repurposing committee, I think it's it is changing our tune and how we feel about owning the building. Well, we certainly we're speculating that the town's going to buy it still. Well, I think that is we have a hope we have a vision we have a vision that because of the work done and because i, mean, I have to say i'm a little more hopeful just talking i've been talking less to older people in rochester and more to younger people in rochester and they're rather excited about it they're really excited about the potentials of that building and i think and i said to them very clearly you need to be at these meetings you need to be at this revote meeting and i think that's going to be one of our jobs is to really get out uh get the parents of the t kids out get the the younger generation out to vote to talk about this and vote on this because i understand fixed incomes all that kind of thing of an older person this sounds like an overwhelming thing to take on um possibly um i don't want to speak to them so yes i think we have to we have to take on that but we are we are, I am full going full speed toward the idea that Rochester is going to take this on. Megan Payne brought up a great thing that I'd forgotten about. She said, this never should have been part of the merger. It should have been taken out, and it almost was at one point when she was in the work. It almost took the building out and just gave it to Rochester right then. Yeah. And that it always should be, it should have been Rochester's from the first place. Mm -hmm. And that that I think is a really great argument, and I think it's something to say to Stockbridge that they sort of felt that too <laughs> from the beginning. And I think all of us sort of wish it had been decided back in that time, um, and maybe they left it open for the options for us. But um, that's an argument that I think could potentially carry the day when we get to March and we're really at a point where we're voting. So. Um, I don't know. I, I, what's the will of the board? Do we need anything or does our discussion do it? I think our discussion does it. Okay. Do we feel our discussion or do you feel that we need a clear... I'll ask Vic that because it's we want to send a message, seems to me, that we're, we're excited about the possibility. Uh, We've uh, said that before. We're certainly okay, excited. Well, it's, we support them. We support their vision. Okay. We've allowed people to go okay. in. I mean, we, we have done said this before, so I don't know, but that's fine. It does feel uh, like heating the, the minutes and the minutes reflect the, some of the key reasons, as Patrick was saying, that it's so important uh, that we can get that from from Vic and the repurposing committee. Um, but it would be great to see something up on <clears throat> our son's website, a link. Yeah, soon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. The idea. notes that we're talking about going to reach out. Yeah. 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 Link with, with the repurposing. Yeah. So to, we're, Lady, we're sorry, thinking just say? putting the link Maybe to their site. Already, yeah. I think it's already happened. Oh. Uh -huh. oh that's right. We were because there was a conversation about adding a tab for community yeah. names. Yeah. Perfect. And cool. I think he already took care of it. But cool. Well. Good. Okay. Then well, do you feel like you have um our what you, what uh, you need for it to go towards the trustees of public funds or yeah you know they haven't participated in any of these conversations obviously and i think anything that we could provide them in terms of any formal i know there was a vote the last was the last school board meeting where the, the school board did vote its support for the project and and uh, you know maybe that's sufficient um, okay well we definitely are, are going together as part i mean all of us seem to be in agreement unless yeah. somebody yeah. Talking about fundraising, though, we have 
trunk or treat, correct? Is that coming up? It's not trunk officially retreat? approved yet. So it it has, isn't. It has to go through the select board because of where they want to host it. Uh, so tonight would kind of be our chance to discuss yeah, that. Since we're organizing there. Uh -huh. I mean, well, we need to, I mean, maybe the heating committee can be the fundraising committee. <laughs> uh, no, I, <laughs> I, I, I think we should put it back onto no, the, to the yeah, uh, repurposing, no, I and I think that if any no. of the school board members want to, uh, on their own, be, gotcha. you know, yeah. volunteer yeah. to work with them, I think that would be the most important. Yeah. Yeah. Our, 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 our responsibility, we were, we were volunteering to take on, is the community-wide, community-based fundraising across the yeah. province, and we'd love to have, you know, individual members of the school board, the school community for that matter, participate and be part of it and that'd be great and you know we'll, we'll be in touch about opportunities to do that but uh, we see that as that's our role we'll take that on and and you know the the meeting that we had together was really inspiring it was a great conversation and great sense of collaboration and the and the trustees of uh, public funds will be really heartened to hear that that's what the approach we're taking together wonderful i'm glad to hear that thank you yeah thank you thank you just to finish so we we I just want to make it very clear. So we feel like our discussion has covered and we don't need to do a further vote tonight. So can you say up, yeah. yes? Yes, we don't need to do anything further tonight by a thumbs up. <laughs> Good. Okay. That's clear. Thank you. I do Thank have you. a question about um logistics uh and this task force. We've had this meeting, we have minutes. We're not planned to meet again. We're not going to meet again. We're, we we okay. had not planned to meet again. Um, My sense is that you'll probably meet at some point in the future and then we can approve those and minutes at that time because okay. just the ei work i think there could be times once the full board approves the ei work that i may need to pull this task force okay. together mm -hmm. but okay. you may get an overall thing in november my sense is the board may not be ready to take formal action to december and it would make sense to use that task force if there was follow-up questions okay. from the presentation of very good thank you yeah okay Thank you. Moving on. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Driver's Education Proposal Program for Tuition Voucher. Um, let me just give you the background on this. I got an um, email from Burley Griffin, our pre-K, one of our two pre-K teachers. On, oh, he's on. Good for you. Glad to be here. Um, um, because, uh, uh, well, as I heard today from some students at um, Sharon Academy, they used to have someone there who was actually teaching driver's ed as well as other things. Um, they no longer have that program. And Burley was looking for possibilities for his son who wants to get his learner's permit. Um, and we, I reached out to Jamie. Jamie got back to me that there is a program at South Arlington High School. Um, he's having trouble right now finding out if it's full or not. He's talking to different is. people. Yeah. Okay, but uh, um, but nobody seems to be able to tell him that specifically. So that was just one issue that he ran into. So we came up with this idea that would exist um, of a voucher program to pay for it. And I'm not sure exactly what we're paying for and yeah. where, so, but but the idea, and we came up with some numbers that he thought there were four kids right now um, who are at TSA. And so, so let me oh, explain how it could work. What, so, what what are you amy shaking your head for? oh um this has been brought to me before on the board yeah. um and so please though go ahead with oh. so i have a model in granville hancock that we do this there is a voucher program it you we would need to budget for it because mm -hmm. it wouldn't be just for tsa students right you couldn't say we're just going to pay for drivers ed for tsa yeah so it would be what the Granville Hancock did is they created a program that specifies that it's one time voucher for $700 up to $700 for students who cannot participate in driver's education through their secondary school. That could be programs full, could be the school that they chose to go to doesn't provide it. Mm -hmm. The there's costs associated with that that we would need to budget for. And so my one thing I would say is based on just like the heating, for example, like if we were to pursue this, I think we I my recommendation for you now even as the soup would be next year, just so we could budget for it. Mm -hmm. um, 
we had some students participate in Granville Hancock this past year. One of the procedures is it actually requires the school counselor for the receiving school to confirm that there's not a driver's education option. Again, this doesn't just impact independent schools, mm -hmm. it impacts public schools too. Example, I've got a 17 year old home, U32 couldn't, didn't have enough driver's ed, we paid for him to have private driver's ed um, in order to get driver's ed completed. So there's, there's definitely a larger ramification to this decision mm -hmm. than just the students who go to TSA. Gotcha. Um, right, because we have uh, at least 30, 35 tuition students mm -hmm. in each school, so that, right? Right. So, so right, that's right, right. potential of 70 kids times $700, so that's about $50,000. Well, but I'm saying they have to apply for it. Or yeah, do I mean, they have we have to just give it willy-nilly? No, they have to apply. What they have we to would do is, what we did for Granville Hancock is we ran the enrollment data, and what we said to them is, based on the students that you have going to these schools, we're estimating, and we estimated high, mm -hmm. that this could be your impact to the budget. Mm -hmm. um, and so if the board was interested in continuing this conversation, some boards like Granville Hancock pursued it. This comes up to first branch every year. They don't, they don't want anything to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I think it's come up here even maybe since I've been. Yeah, I, I remember it's come up um, and, the, and the board didn't pursue it. So if it's something you wanted data on, what we would do is I would recommend the next step be is that you ask us to do some research around our students who are in that age range, what our, our average number of students typically is, and then I can estimate based on where they go in regards to TSA versus going to Harwood. Harwood has some capacity issues sometimes. That's part of our issue with Granville Hancock. They're not able to meet all the students' needs for driver's education and give you at least a ballpark range oh. of what it could do to you budget-wise, if that's well, something you wanted to even pursue. Well, also, a child not being able to participate in driver's ed could be due to they need to drive after school and transportation isn't provided for them to come back to Rochester. This so was ba the way we word it was capacity. Okay. Like either they didn't offer it or the school couldn't provide it. It okay. wasn't. That's what I was it's a hardship. Like, yeah. Like there's we, a lot of different we gray areas that I mm -hmm. can see. I mean, it doesn't cost us anything to run the numbers. That's my thing. Well. Take some administrative time. I'm not against that, but I'm yeah. just it, it, somebody's got to stop what they're doing and and run the numbers. I have two questions. One is um, strategically, uh, one of the visions I think many of us have is that, uh, in fact, it's one of our goals is to um, make our high school, our Red River Valley High School, the flagship of our SU. Um, when you when you you're talking about attracting students, and we're talking about K through 12, we're not talking about K through six. We're not talking about K through eight. We're talking about K through 12. So my question is, does does this have any implications that can help us move towards that goal at all? And then secondly, um, if not, um, is there things that we could utilize or need that, for instance, the Sharon Academy could support our supervisory union with and uh, with resources, with uh, the curriculum, with teachers, whatever the case is. Um, we're in a competitive environment and I'm very much aware of that. And one thing we've got that uh, other schools possibly don't have is we've got a driver's ed program. Okay. Yeah, so we also have great uh, sports teams. We also got space, uh, music and you name it, but that's one of them. And so I don't know. I, I'm feeling. Let's look at this strategically as well as. Um, gee, we will we'll take on the administrative burden of, of of not only figuring out what the costs are, but administering it. Mm -hmm. That's that's my that's my two cents. So um, we do we meet our needs at our high school. We're not sending kids away. So at the WRVSU White River Valley High School, we're meeting our students' needs for driver's ed. Um, we don't have capacity to meet our needs plus sharing academies. My one argument and what I've said to parents in the past that tuition to shared academy is your tax dollars 
you, you are spending 18.5 per pupil to go to Sharon Academy. And I don't mean this critically, but the tuition at our high school is lower than that. And, and they you provide drivers driver's ed. Ed. <laughs> And we provide extracurricular activities and there's no fee involved for those extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, my, my one thing that I think I have a hard time with is I, I wish I would, and I've said this before to families, I am very supportive to advocate with you to share an academy that especially now that you say you may, you meet a quality standards and you get to set your tuition driver's ed should be part of that package. Mm -hmm. right. um, and so that's the other option too, is that as a board, we could craft something to advocate to share an academy that they consider that for mm -hmm. their students um, and how they're going to provide that. That would that'd be my, mm -hmm. that'd be my stand on it. All right, how do we, what's your pleasure? What do we want to do on this? I, I agree with Jamie that I think that we pay, um, we pay tuition to Sharon Academy, um, the same as we pay tuition to, to, to Woodstock. Um, and it's a, to pay an, an additional amount so a child could access driver's ed, um, whereas it's included in the Woodstock tuition. Um, doesn't actually even seem equitable to me because now why doesn't that kid get something extra so um, I hear the parents and I understand um, mm -hmm. completely, um, but that is one of the things you have to take into consideration when you decide where you're going to send your kids. So are we saying we do not want to that, that's move just forward? What I'm no, no, saying. no. I'm, I, this is a vote. Okay. I'm, I, I think we need a motion on this, that we are not going to go forward with having our administration look into the details of a tuition voucher. Is that the consensus? Sure. Oh, I don't know. I, I'd I, make I, that motion. Amy, I, sure. I, I, okay. That's my information too. I don't, I'm not sure from you and from Patrick or from Justine what right? your opinion. Okay. Yeah. Justine. I feel the same way. Okay. That's my inclination. I think that's very clear. Okay. I think um, uh, would someone be willing to craft that letter? <laughs> oh, a letter to Sharon? Yeah. Oh, I think, okay, well, that's, it's a separate. Just to say, we just, we just, well, we, you know, we just said we did not vote for a tuition voucher. But um, I don't know. This is just suggested by Jamie. That was suggested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could I know. I'm just saying, what do you want to do? Yeah. You pay the tuition dollars no, to no, no. Sharon. I get it. I get it. You could craft a statement yeah. to them saying that you have concerns that students are electing to go to Sharon Academy and that driver's education is not something being provided. I, I would support that. No, I was actually actually for a volunteer who would uh, <laughs> hit Burley. I, um, no, I think that's something that um, oh, okay. our administration could do quite well and quite easily, and it, it advances, I think, our, our strategic objectives. Um, uh, Burley would like to make a comment now. This is our last item. Um, well, do we need to even make a motion on this because it, it, it's it's in discussion no. and not in action? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not a not a motion. Good. Um, okay. So public comment is coming up in yeah, two so days. Can... Will we allow him to speak now? Is that how did the board feel about that? Well, since we're not making a, um, do we have any new hires and resignations? We do. Oh, okay. Then, early, if you can just wait, it's literally two items on um, for public comment, and then we'll we'll hear your 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 two cents. And this that we're taking no action doesn't mean it's dead. It just means we're not taking any action today. And we this would only be a discussion anyway tonight, Burley. We would have to warn it as an action item, and they would have to do some work. So, you know, it, it would be a process. And I think, as you might have heard, Jamie was saying, it would be in next year's budget if, if we did it, not for this. That year. would be my recommendation. Yeah, that recommendation. So it's a long-term process. Let's get through this, uh, new hires and designations, and then we'll get the public comment. Then. Uh -huh. Yep, so I present to the board Cynthia McPetris's resignation from uh, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District as the art teacher and Rochester School as the school librarian, effective immediately today, October 4th. Very good. We thank her for her work. 
And uh, of course, you're well. Um, uh, can I have a motion to accept the resignation of Cynthia Mefritris? Um, so moved. With appreciation. So moved by Bill Edgerton. Seconded. Second. Seconded by Patrick Hudson. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, aye you guys have it. Thank you. Um, and you, do you have a plan to? We do have a temporary plan in place for coverage. Okay. So we're good. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, we will be in searching for those positions immediately. Okay. Very good. And now we move to public comment early. Please have your say. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Um, I just. I, I hear the board's discussion, um, and I would just request that um, perhaps some um, investigation be done on the cost analysis, like was done in the Granville Hancock district. Um, it, I'm not asking for anything specific to Sharon Academy students. Um, my my son is a Sharon Academy student, um, but my my thought was a voucher program like this would serve all the students from Rochester who are tuition to other schools that don't are, are not able to access uh, <clears throat> driver's education um, and not uh, let's see not you know be the the Sharon Academy is not offering a program right now because they don't have a teacher for it it's not that they they don't offer it or they don't have the budget for it there's just simply a shortage of qualified teachers for driver's education and they don't have one. Um, so I'm trying to expand options for our students who choose to go other, other places for high schools, um, but cer certainly not specific to Sharon Academy or, um, you know, or, in, or my student even there's, there's a need that I see for, this sort of program to give all of our students, no matter where they go, equitable access to driver's education training. So that that's what I'm what I'm asking the board. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Burley. Is Mitch still on? Is Mitch still on? I don't see her. No. no. Okay. Sorry for that. Um, I remember the days we used to let them break in all over the place. That was brutal. I'm sorry, I just had a flashback there. Mm -hmm. um, next meeting date, uh, Thursday, October 13th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. Rochester campus in person only for the board retreat. And Monday, November 7th, 2022 at 5.30 p.m. Rochester campus Google Meet regular board meeting. Uh, future agenda items, we're going to be EI, EI. EI definitely is going to yeah. be on there. Um, we'll probably have a, a high school. Uh, we'll, high school. Um, high school. We'll probably have a, I think we'll have another reading by then of the apply policy. You think that's too fast? No, the, the committee will take feedback and yeah. work on it again in, in yeah. this coming month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll probably You'll get a, another draft. Um, yeah. Will we have a, a educational? What is it celebration called? of learning? Yeah, yes. celebration of learning. Great. Best and part of that. And actually, you're probably, I think the calendar has academic data yes. for. Yeah, that's, that's good. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I like the celebration of learning more than academic data myself, but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Well, I think they, it's all important. Right? It's, it's, all all important. important. No, no, it's all part of it. It all feeds different ones of our brains, and we all have different parts of our brains. Great. <laughs> All right, that said, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I made a motion to adjourn. Amy makes a motion to adjourn. Bill, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very much for tonight. Thank you for participation.